Welcome to Kayhawk Stadium here on the campus of Collinsville High School. Spring sports time. That's what the schedule says, and that's why we are here as your Collinsville Lady Kayhawk soccer team gets ready to open up the 2024 campaign against the Lady Bulldogs of Waterloo High School. I am Todd Duke. Once again, a very good evening to everyone. It's a beautiful day. Let's get started and welcome you into the pregame show brought to you by LC's Pub in Caseyville. Great food, great drinks, and great services served up daily at LC's Pub in Caseyville. 605 North Main Street in Caseyville is where they are located, just a stone's throw from where I'm sitting right now. You can give them a call for carryout orders, but only if you're hungry. LC's Pub, 618-855-9007. All right, so we have Collinsville versus Waterloo, season opener for both of these teams tonight. Collinsville, their head coach is Jody Munoz, into her third year as the Lady Chaos soccer head coach, and she has a record of 8-29-7. and seven. Waterloo is coached by Chad Holden, who is into his 24th year in that role, and he has a record of 318 wins, 149 losses, and 36 ties. Well, the uh, Lady Chaos soccer program is coming off of a season that only saw the team win three games last year, 
Collinsville scored just 22 goals last year. And the uh, seven players that graduated last school year accounted for 18 of those, leaving four current players that scored one goal each. So we turn the page on last season and look ahead to a team that uh, sways a bit on the young side with only one senior on this year's roster. But the roster is filled with promise as most of the young lady Kayhawks got some very valuable varsity playing experience last season. Besides the uh, lone senior, Collinsville has six juniors, five sophomores, and five freshmen that make up the uh, 2024 varsity roster. One of those sophomores is Carly Van Dyke, who as a freshman last year was the team's number one goalkeeper, 1,180 minutes of experience last year. Should prove to be a, a bit of a bright spot heading into this season. Lady Bulldogs are coming off a very solid year last year, one year ago with a 14-4-2 regular season. Waterloo then marched through last year's regional playoffs, outscoring their opponents in the two playoff games 15 to nothing. The Lady Bulldogs registered another shutout with a 3 0 win over Mattoon in the sectional semifinal before the uh, Triad Lady Knights ended Waterloo's season in the semifinals with a 2 1 win by Triad. Waterloo, they lost eight players from last year's team to graduation, and seven of those eight players accounted for 50 of the 90 goals that the Waterloo Lady Bulldogs scored last year. Waterloo also lost their number one goalkeeper from a year ago in Lexi Stevens, who played all but one minute between the goalposts. She went 17-5-2, only allowed 14 goals in 1,847 minutes and registered 15 shutouts in her 24 games. Waterloo will now rely on senior keeper Larkin Notmeyer, who played that one minute of varsity last year and gave up one goal on one shot in that minute. Had a chance just a little while ago to catch up with Collinsville head coach Jody Munoz. We pass that conversation on to you next as the LC's Pub pregame show continues right here on the Kayhawk Sports Network. Looking for a little bite to eat in a nice, friendly establishment before heading out to a game? Look no further than LC's Pub in Caseyville, just blocks from Collinsville High School. LC's Pub is the pub of choice for Kayhawk fans before, after, or even during Kayhawk games. LC's Pub features a wide variety of traditional bar food like burgers and fries, chicken wings and chicken strips, appetizers like pepper jack mac and cheese bites, fried pickles, and green beans. Plus, they have salads, fish, shrimp, and more. LC's Pub also features an outdoor patio, a gaming room, weekly poker tournaments, and a pool table, plus enough TVs for all the sports fans. And LC's Pub shows Kayhawk games live as well as Blues and Cardinals games. LC's Pub, 605 North Main Street in Caseyville, right across the intersection from all pro tees. Call for carryout orders at 618-855-9007 and on Facebook at LC's Pub. LC's Pub, Kayhawk fans, pub of choice. CUSD 10 residents have an opportunity to improve our schools without increasing the property tax rate by voting yes on March 19th. The Zero Rate Change Ballot Initiative will provide funds to improve school safety and security, upgrade heating and cooling equipment, and make facilities more accessible to disabled students, staff, and visitors. For more information, visit yesforsaferschools.org. This message was brought to you by the Citizens for Safer Schools. Vote yes for the Unit 10 Ballot Initiative. Do you have a big land improvement project that requires some outside help? Call Petroff Trucking Company. The Petroff companies have been shaping the metro area since 1975. Family owned and operated, Petroff Trucking Company can do the job and do it right. Hauling, excavating and grading, they do that and more. Petroff Companies also has roll-off dumpster rentals. They also specialize in dirt and rock sales. Petroff Trucking Company can help you develop your land for your needs. Petroff Trucking Company. Check out their website, PetroffTrucking.com, or give them a call, 618-797-6100. Petroff Trucking Company, shaping the metro area since 1975. The Junior Service Club of Collinsville has been a proud supporter of KOXSports.com and the KOX Sports Network from day one. Since 1934, the Junior Service Club of Collinsville has been providing women in the community an opportunity to make a difference with fundraisers and projects, all that go towards helping the needy in Collinsville. If you would like any information on any event sponsored by the Collinsville Junior Service Club, head to Facebook, type in Collinsville Junior Service Club, and then click on the event tab. We thank the Collinsville Junior Service Club for their continued support of the Kayhawk Sports Network and KayhawkSports.com. 
Looking for a little bite to eat in a nice, friendly establishment before heading out to a game? Look no further than Elsie's Pub in Caseyville. Just blocks from Collinsville High School, Elsie's Pub is the pub of choice for Cahawk fans, before, after, or even during Cahawk games. Elsie's Pub features a wide variety of traditional bar food, like burgers and fries, chicken wings and chicken strips, appetizers like pepper jack mac and cheese bites, fried pickles, and green beans. Plus, they have salads, fish, shrimp, and more. Elsie's Pub also features an outdoor patio, a gaming room, weekly poker tournaments, and a pool table, plus enough TVs for all the sports fans. And Elsie's Pub shows Cahawk games live, as well as Blues and Cardinals games. Elsie's Pub, 605 North Main Street in Caseyville, right across the intersection from all pro tees. Call for carryout orders at 618-855-9007 and on Facebook at Elsie's Pub. Elsie's Pub, Cahawk fans pub of choice. And we welcome you back into the LC's Pub pregame show here on the Cahawk Sports Network as we kick off our spring season. And you couldn't ask for a better day weather-wise than to get things started. And we get things started with a little Lady Cahawk soccer action. And joining us now is third-year Lady Cahawk head soccer coach Jody Munoz. So, Coach, uh, last year a bit of a rough year for the program. Let's not uh, dwell on that season too much. But tell me, uh, what lessons can be learned from that season that you can use to guide this year's team toward a better outcome? Basically, you know, records, your records don't, I'm, yes, they mean something, but they don't mean everything. And, for, you know, we could have easily crumbled last year. We did not. We kept fighting. And that attitude has come forward this year. And they know, you know what, we don't have anything to prove to anyone this year. We're the underdog automatically. And so we're just coming out to play. Tell us a little bit about the uh, off season and all the work that you and the ladies have put in to get to this first game. Um, it's, it, it's been a hard off season. A lot of them have been pushed to their mental capacity and physical capacity. But, you know, n no one quit. No one gave up. We're all here and we're all happy to be here. Tell me a little bit about the, uh, the resiliency a after last season and what it means coming into this season with a fresh state of mind. Uh, well, it means everything because, you know, like you said, last year was rough. And, you know, we got to get that out of our minds. We've had a lot of talks about it. And, you know, we lost seven starters, starting seniors, and we only have one returning senior. So, our, you know, we got a fresh group. We got fresh eyes, fresh legs. We got a whole new group. So I'm really excited to see what happens. It's going to make my senior interviews a little uh, easier this year, that's for sure. All right, so uh, tell us a little bit about the makeup of the team. Who are the team captains and what kind of leadership qualities do they bring to the table of the team? Okay, um, so our team captains are uh, Ashley Janini, and sorry, we haven't even given these out yet. <laughs> I think who the other one was. Oh, Morgan Lang. So these two are our leaders. Um, Ashley is obviously our leader in the back. Morgan is on the midfield. They're both very outspoken, supportive, just positive people and players. All right, you do, as you mentioned, have only one senior on their team. So you come into this year a little young, yeah. but at the same time, you have a lot of these girls that played a lot of varsity minutes last year. So how is that going to play into the season's outcome? Oh, I think it's going to be good. Um, I'm actually really excited for th this year. Yes, we only have one senior, but I mean, pretty much this year and next year is going to be the exact same team. Um, our junior class is experienced because, like you said, they got to play last year. And then, you know, looking into the sophomore freshman class, like, it's, I'm just excited for a young team going forward. All right, goalkeeper Carly Van Dyke had over 1,000 minutes in goal last year as a freshman mm -hmm. on the varsity squad. Uh, big minutes for a freshman, tons of experience now. Tell me what that kind of exposure means to her coming into this season. I think a hundred times more confidence. I mean, you know, you're getting thrown in as a freshman into a varsity atmosphere, and it is scary. This year, she is totally different. She's talking more. She's stepping up, and I'm very proud of the way she's been. Tell me a little bit about the uh, the makeup of your team as far as the X's and O's goes. Any changes from last year? Same formation, same setups? Um, well, we're going to have... That's hard to say. It's going to kind of, you know, probably go game by game case to see who we're playing. But for the most part, it's probably going to be about the same formation. Maybe it's not as defensive minded as last year. And but it's still going to be we still have that kind of have that same issue we're dealing with right now. We just have to find a way to put the ball in the net. All right, you have Waterloo here tonight. You had them at their place last year to open up the season. And that was a 0-0 uh, zero, zero tie. You did uh, outshoot them. Six shots on goal for you guys and only two for them. So tell me what the takeaways are from that game that you can use for this game. Well, they're kind of in the same boat as we are. So I couldn't tell a lot from last year. They lost a crap ton of players. We also did. So we both had kind of talked before the game, and we're both kind of starting from scratch. And we really don't know what tonight's going to bring, but we're both hoping for the best. Yeah, you told me about the uh, the, the players that you're missing from last year. 
Uh, and they're missing the same. They scored 90 goals last year. 50 of those goals graduated. You guys scored 22. 18 of those goals graduated. You got four girls on your team who each scored one goal. So where's the goal scoring going to come from? <laughs> well, that's a good question. Um, but we're hoping it's going to come. We have we have some people we're going to put up top. And if that doesn't work, we're going to put them somewhere else. But I think I really think their fire alone is going to score goals. All right, so tell me, uh, regardless of the outcome of today's game, whether you win, you lose, or you tie, what are you looking for out of your girls in this game? Basically, tonight, I want to erase last season altogether, which is hard to do. I just want them to come out, enjoy the game, have fun, and play the best they can. Thanks for the visit, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. All right, that is Jody Munoz, third-year Lady Kayak head soccer coach. We'll take a break here on the LC's Pub pregame show, and when we come back, we'll set the uh, starting sides for both of these teams and all that and more coming up on the Kayak Sports Network. Looking for a little bite to eat in a nice, friendly establishment before heading out to a game? Look no further than LC's Pub in Caseyville. Just blocks from Collinsville High School, LC's Pub is the pub of choice for Kayhawk fans before, after, or even during Kayhawk games. LC's Pub features a wide variety of traditional bar food like burgers and fries, chicken wings and chicken strips, appetizers like pepper jack mac and cheese bites, fried pickles, and green beans. Plus, they have salads, fish, shrimp, and more. LC's Pub also features an outdoor patio, a gaming room, weekly poker tournaments, and a pool table, plus enough TVs for all the sports fans. And LC's Pub shows Kayhawk games live, as well as Blues and Cardinals games. LC's Pub, 605 North Main Street in Caseyville, right across the intersection from all pro tees. Call for carryout orders at 618-855-9007 and on Facebook at LC's Pub. LC's Pub, Kayhawk fans, pub of choice. Your home is where you feel happy, safe, and secure. So if you see signs of foundation problems like cracks or uneven floors, worrying is natural, and getting it fixed is crucial. Woods Basement Systems understands. We've been solving foundation worries since 1986. Woods experts have the training and equipment to make permanent repairs. So stop worrying, because with Woods, it's fixed forever. Foundation problems don't get better with time. They get better with Woods, the all-things basement -y experts. Call or go to woodsbasementsystems.com today. Collinsville Barbecue Supply, home of Code 3 Spices, is first responder owned by proud Cahawk alums. Located at 1966 Vandalia, Collinsville Barbecue Supply is your one-of-a-kind barbecue headquarters that focuses on everything barbecue and cooking. Providing the best American-made barbecue grills, in-person class instruction, smokers, rubs, sauces, accessories, and cooking expertise from professional barbecue experts, including an in-house chef and pit master. Code 3 Spices provides award-winning sauces and rubs that supports our nation's first responder and military organizations that focus on the fallen, suicide prevention, and PTSD awareness. Stop on by. See the guys at Collinsville Barbecue Supply for all of your cooking and grilling needs. Collinsville Barbecue Supply, home of the four-time world champion Patriot Sauce. Learn more about their products and mission in giving back to those who serve at CollinsvilleBarbecue.com or call 618-855-8855. Plumbing or electrical problems? Is your AC or heater on the fritz? There are dozens of companies out there, but do you really know who you're letting in your home? Trust Tiger. Our technicians are clean cut, drug free, and background checked. What other company can make this bold statement? Our 24 hour emergency service will ensure your plumbing, heating, AC, and electric are up and running no matter what time of day it is. Schedule your appointment today. Tiger Plumbing, Heating, Air Conditioning, and Electrical Services. We earn our stripes every day. Once again, we welcome you back into the broadcast booth here at the Kayhawk Sports Network at Kayhawk Stadium as we open up the Lady Kayhawk soccer season. My name is Todd Duke on the other microphone. Joining us once again for another year of Lady Kayhawk soccer is none other than Mr. Brett Borm. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, Todd. It's great to be back at Kayhawk Stadium for a little Lady Kayhawk soccer. Yeah, man, you got to go through the ringer again. You just watched your uh, son on his senior season in the fall, and now... You get to watch your junior daughter play here again. Yep, that uh, that loss to Naperville for the boys still hasn't worn off. Uh, still mourning that loss, but uh, yeah, junior daughter that's uh, going to be starting today. I think at a at a holding mid position, and uh, yeah, let's let's do it. All right, you had a chance to uh, listen to Coach Munoz and her comments in the pregame show. So, give me your thoughts. Yeah, there's a lot to digest there. She she covered a lot, uh, and I think everything she said is accurate. You know, there's there's going to be a challenge this year, no doubt about it. Um, depth is going to be a challenge as well. 
but you do have a lot of uh, some experience coming back from that freshman class that was last year that's now sophomores and, and some juniors that have seen some playing time as well. So um, she and I have talked multiple times, and I think, uh, I think she's got something to build here uh, in the next three or four years. There could be something special going on. Yeah, going to have to uh, rely on the now sophomore goalkeeper in uh, Carly Van Dyke because she got a lot of playing time last year as a freshman, as you heard me ask Coach. Mm -hmm. Yep, she did a great job last year as a freshman. Um, I, I think some of her weak points were uh, her, her, you know, being being quiet in the back. You want your goalkeeper to be back there owning that six-yard box, owning that 18. Um, that got better as it went along, but she's got to be very commanding. She's got to be a leader back there for this defense. Yeah, especially when you're uh, talking about one senior yeah. on the team and Olivia Johnson, but mm -hmm. you got a load of juniors who saw a lot of time last year as sophomores. Yes, yep, that is correct. Yeah, and Olivia Johnson didn't even play last year. No, she didn't. Um, but it's great to have her back. Um, you know, she was a good player as a sophomore that was starting for that, that, that team um, before she decided not to return last year. So, yeah, uh, let's just see what we got. This would be a good test. Waterloo, very similar situation, losing, uh, losing a lot of players. You know, Collinsville loses somebody like um, uh, the, the Van Dykes, the Belandises, the Jordan Garys. I mean, those are tough minutes to replace, man. Yeah, they are. I think uh, Olivia Johnson came back just because she would be sad if I didn't have another Johnson to announce. Right. Yeah. All right, that is Brett Bourne. My name is Todd Duke. We have one final break coming your way. We'll pass along the starting lineups here in just a moment on the Kayhawk Sports Network. Pack Mail of Collinsville, locally owned and operated by Ryan Combs. Pack Mail can ship anything, anywhere. They treat you like a neighbor because, well, you are a neighbor. Pack Mail offers shipping materials and containers, private mailboxes, as well as climate controlled self storage. Visit Pack Mail at 407 Beltline Road in Collinsville. Online, we ship St. Louis.com or call Pack Mail at 346 48. Eight, four. Financial investments are very important, but so are the investments of time, patience, and encouragement our young athletes receive from their coaches, teachers, and mentors. Jason Regg, your Benjamin F. Edwards financial advisor, understands this. That's why Jason Regg is a proud supporter of your Collinsville Kayhawks and the Kayhawks Sports Network, as well as the Kayhawk Educator of the Month Award. For all of your investment needs, see financial advisor and investment vice president Jason Regg at the Benjamin F. Edwards office in Collinsville located at 1008 Vandalia Street, or call Jason Reg at 618-223-5215 or visit BenjaminFEdwards.com. Benjamin F. Edwards, member SIPC. We love to have you come work for the city of Collinsville. We have many positions available from seasonal jobs to full-time opportunities in many of our departments. From police and fire to Gateway Center, parks and recreation, and City Hall. Our employees enjoy great benefits like comprehensive medical plans, paid time off, tuition reimbursement, and more. Visit the city's website, collinsvilleil.org, to apply and learn more about working for the city of Collinsville. Looking for a more upscale place to have a few drinks and some great food? Look no further than the Speakeasy Parlor in Maryville. Come inside for some one-of-a-kind crafted cocktails and some elevated bar food that highlights fresh ingredients. Then, try your luck in the private slot machine room. And don't forget to check out the Speakeasy sister company, Plan Shop Live, just three doors down. Plan Shop Live is a health-focused lunch cafe open Tuesday through Friday from 11 to 3. Speakeasy Parlor, 2713 North Center Street in Maryville, open seven days a week with happy hour specials during the week from 5 to 7 p.m. Speakeasy Parlor in Maryville, 618-205-3540. CUSD 10 residents have an opportunity to improve our schools without increasing the property tax rate by voting yes on March 19th. The Zero Rate Change Ballot Initiative will provide funds to improve school safety and security, upgrade heating and cooling equipment, and make facilities more accessible to disabled students, staff, and visitors. For more information, visit yesforsaferschools.org. This message was brought to you by the Citizens for Safer Schools. Vote yes for the Unit 10 ballot initiative. And once again, welcome back to Kayhawk Stadium as we get you set for this home and season opener for your Collinsville Lady Kayhawk soccer team as they get ready to take on the Waterloo Lady Bulldogs. Let's go over the starters for both of these teams and we'll begin with Waterloo. In goal is Larkin Notmeyer. In front of her, you will find Megan Young, Kate Pohl, Grace Pohl, 
Madeline Prather, Megan Hubner, Liv Colson, Paige Lindhorst, Aubrey Heck, Taylor Thorsten, and Chloe Wagon Connect. And for Collinsville in goal, we already talked about her. Carly Van Dyke in front of Carly, you will find Olivia Johnson. Morgan Lang, one of the two captains on this year's team. Ava DiGirolamo, Ella Borm, Ryland Judasek, Ashley Janini, the other captain, Addie Munoz, Carly Call, Liliana Lira, and Elenia Cerna. Collinsville out there in the purple uniforms, both tops and the bottoms. Numbers on the fronts and the backs of those jerseys are in white. And the Waterloo Lady Bulldogs have on the orange shorts with the white tops and the numbers and the names on the backs of their jerseys are also in orange. We are underway and here we go. By the way, we can tell you that the uh, JV game was a 0-0 draw between these two teams. Collinsville had a lot of chances in that in that contest, especially as the uh, second half progressed, but uh, credit to Waterloo's JV goalkeeper and uh, they kept Collinsville off the board. Already a stoppage in play right underneath our location. Collinsville will get the throw in and here is the only senior on the team, number five, Olivia Johnson. She gets the ball in and then gets it right back, sends it up into the middle, and with it now is Carly Call. Carly, of course, playing on the uh, basketball team earlier th earlier this year, saw a lot of action on the JV squad, but got inserted into a few varsity games along the way. And Ashley Janini, the, uh, one of the two captains also on that basketball team as well. And the same story, I think Ashley saw a little bit more varsity time than did Carly during the uh, aforementioned basketball season, but... Both of those young ladies coming from basketball over to soccer. Now, throw Muniz in there as well, you know. Yeah, Carly Van Dyke as well. Yeah, multiple sport athletes uh, in that in that sophomore class for sure. All right, and speaking of Van Dyke, she'll come out and take that one with no pressure coming up her way at all. She wears double zero on her jersey as she surveys things and gets ready to send it out. We're back at you tomorrow too. Got some Lady Chaos softball action coming up for you. They'll have their home opener tomorrow against Roxana. The uh, Lady Kellogg softball team opened up their season today with a road game at Father McGivney and won 22-2 in four innings. Here was a chance momentarily there for DiGirolamo, and then a shot will go over the end line, and it'll be a goal kick restart coming up for Larkin Notmeyer. As we mentioned in the pregame show, she had one minute in varsity action last year and gave up one goal on the only shot that she saw, so... She will uh, have a lot more experience this year coming at the uh, varsity level for the senior. It's really strange not to uh, get as much playing time when you're a junior, but she only got one minute last year. Mm -hmm. Must have had a stud goalie as a senior. Yeah, they did. Yeah. So far, got to gotta say, I like Collinsville's possession. They are working the ball around, moving it side to side. A uh, little bit of a shock to me. I think uh, they're, they're doing very well so far holding this Waterloo Bulldogs uh, scoreless. Yeah, well, we're early on, that's for sure. Right. Waterloo missing a lot of parts from last year's team that uh, won 17 games as Collinsville. They reject that one right at the uh, middle of that box. And Waterloo continues to go back to work. Here is Young. Pops the ball up, and Collinsville will track it down. Hopefully we can get it out of there without any further damage being done. And that's exactly what we do up the sideline, and it's knocked out of bounds by Waterloo. And, of course, already I got a number that I don't have a name for. I don't have a number 15 on my roster. For Waterloo? Yeah. No. Yeah, it goes from 14 to 16, no 15. So we'll uh, try to figure it out as we go along, if we can. Here is Waterloo with another opportunity and a nice save there as that ball trickles away Great from shape. Van Dyke and it just squeaked right past that near side post. Thankfully, it wasn't shot any harder than that or that might have bounced off of Van Dyke's hands and in. Yeah. Unfortunately, they did earn the corner kick from the from the shot, but what a fantastic, uh, fantastic save to Van Dyke's right. Quality save. Yeah, all right, so Grace Poley, junior midfielder, will take this corner kick, so the first set piece belongs to Waterloo. Collins has got a body up in here. And out the other side it goes, bounce down and right into the hands of Van Dyke. So Waterloo registers the first true shot on goal. And a nice save there by Van Dyke as she will send us back to action with the ball sky high out to midfield. Beautiful day to get things started in the spring. That's for sure going to be even better tomorrow for that softball game. And then things get a little dicey and chippy as we go along. Got a little rain in the forecast on Thursday. We don't have a, uh, I don't have 
a game scheduled Thursday. <laughs> but Zach Roseman will be here along with Brett Borm mm -hmm. to do the Lady Calix soccer game here Thursday. I was scheduled to uh, do the uh, season opener baseball game until I found out I was on the JV field in Edwardsville. So no broadcast booth there. No. I mean, you mean Betterville doesn't have, you know, fantastic facilities like they proclaim? Well, they the bar varsity, yeah, good. the varsity yeah. side does. Right. They have a uh, press box and everything that I don't have any problem using, but the JV field does not have anything. And with a little bit of uh, moisture in the forecast, I do not want to set up outside. Why are they playing a varsity game on it's the JV a, field? Uh, it's a tournament that they got to start off the year, and uh, there was, uh, Edwardsville is playing on their varsity field at the same time that Collinsville's game is going on against Oswego. Got it. So our opening baseball game will take place Friday night at GCS Ballpark against New Trier. I'm looking forward to that baseball team. I think they're going to be. I think they're going to shock some people this year. Yeah. They're going to be good. Yeah. Unfortunately, you just gave me some bad news yeah. before we went on the air. Yeah. I, I. I hope he's not out too long. But that was just the text that I'd got a little while ago. Yeah. I'm not going to mention anything other than that since right. we don't know for sure. Waterloo with a little sustained offensive pressure until Collinsville kicks the ball out of bounds. That was Olivia Johnson that uh, did the duties there. So Waterloo will have a throw in, and our aforementioned number 15 with no name. That is will throw the ball in. That might be Maddie Prather. Yeah? Yeah, I, I think Ella has played with her club ball. In the, yep, that's that's Maddie. Okay. So, number 15. I think that uh, I had a uh, roster earlier that had two numbers. Because I have on my roster, you can look on your roster, that the uh, goalkeeper, not Meyer, has two different numbers. So I'm guessing she's 53 at home and 23 on the road. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I see, that what you're, see what you're saying. Yeah, I thought there was one more on there, but I uh, – don't see it on my see, list. Prather is listed as 18 on this roster. Yeah. But that, I'm pretty sure that's her. Yeah. I'll believe you. Yeah. So Collinsville trying to chase the ball down. They do so. Nice play over there by Collinsville's Ashley Janini. She is not afraid to go after anyone, soccer or basketball. No, no. She is a physical. She, she's not afraid to get physical. And that I think that's a great spot for her. Yeah. Playing that sweeper role back there. Um Right in front of Ella, I think she'll definitely uh, throw some bodies around. Thorsten sends it over to the other side, and Paige Lindhorst, who, by the way, also wears number 23, so you got Lindhorst out on the field, and then you got Notmeyer in goal, both wearing 23. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. I thought that was kind of strange. I noticed that when they were warming up. All right, so Waterloo goes back to action. Collinsville has it in their offensive zone of the pitch and trying to keep it down there for a little sustained pressure. Collinsville moved the ball down there pretty well on that opening drive, but then they've uh, kind of stale, uh, got kind of stale, and ended up down at the other end of the field for a while. Todd, did you just use the word pitch? I did. Man, you've come a long way, buddy. I'm telling you, man. You have come a long way. Yeah. When I asked Zach Roseman if he wanted to do some soccer games. He's like, "It's not fair, man. You got Brett Borman. I have nobody." <laughs> He's like, "I don't know much about soccer." I'm like, "Well, I'll ask Brett if he'll join you in the booth." And he said, "Yeah." So I'll help him out. Yeah. <clears throat> He's been up here enough with me during that time. That was right. almost a great opportunity there for Collinsville, but. The defense for Waterloo closed in kind of quick. Here is Kate Pohl. Pohl will send the ball up the line. Giving it a chase down is Liv Colson. Colson will get there. Collinsville's got some players back as Waterloo kind of waits it out to get some of their players up. That didn't materialize, so Collinsville comes away with the ball. Harley Call couldn't get it any farther back to midfield, though, and Waterloo takes over once again until Johnson steps in front of that ball and picks it off. For the Cayhawks. She's looking for help and it's nowhere to be found. Yeah, well, now she finally finds some in the form of Morgan Lang. Lang got a lot of minutes last year as a sophomore. And we'll see if that pays off for her this year as that ball goes into the box, but it's stopped by Notmeyer. And Notmeyer will send it on out. On to the foot of Aubrey Heck. Heck sends it up to midfield. Collinsville's Carly Call gets there first and intercepts for a moment. And then Addie Munoz. Takes control of the ball and sends it right back into Collinsville's offensive zone. Touch Ava. Hawks trying to chase it down. DiGirolamo does. Gets it past her defender for just a moment, but then that defender, Liv Colson, kind of closed the door on that small opening, but Collinsville, they stick with it. Here is Lang. And off of a body, and Waterloo will go back to work and send it over the head of Janini. And Janini will go chase it down and then make sure that there's no one following her as she lets the ball roll over to Van Dyke. I see a lot of girls already kind of huffing and puffing. They're not quite in uh, match shape yet. I know a lot of them have been playing multiple sports, but soccer's different, man. You're oh, gonna, yeah, that big time. You're uh, you're going to need a lot more stamina than the, the sprinting of basketball. Yeah, you need an extra lung. Yeah. Which, you know, we don't have those. 
I know I don't. Nope. And that ball rolls over to Van Dyke. She'll take it back toward the middle. Lots of photographers out here tonight, Todd. You got Paz, you got Rick Lang. I thought I saw Mr. Gurley out there. Yeah. It's a good night. Yeah, it is. Good night to get some picks. The JV Kayhawk baseball team won today over Breeze. Breeze Central, that is. Four, or excuse me, 13 to 4. Got some... Uh, Got a lot of run scoring going on between baseball and softball today. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, here is Waterloo once again, just outside the box. They'll send it over here to the corner. And then in front, Collinsville rejects that attempt. And the Cahawks try to break it out. But that yeah, pass is intercepted, intended for Ava DiGirolamo. It's the right idea, but she played it behind her. Yep. Yeah. Over to the far side, sideline it goes, and into the corner of the box. Janini gets there first, puts on a nice move, Love it. gets rid of her defender, and with a head of steam, brings the ball up, and then off of a body, and rolls toward the Cahawk bench, but not quite out of bounds yet. Collinsville trying to get the ball back, but Waterloo, they get it back, and Collinsville will return the favor. Kind of a trade of possessions here going on. And now Waterloo with the ball in their possession over on the far sideline, and bringing it up, I believe that's Grace Pohl. And then the ball will end up going out of bounds. So it'll be a throw in coming up here for Waterloo as we have our first substitutions. Eliana Serna is going to move up to Ava DiGiralmo's spot here at the, at the striker position. And I, Quinn, Quinn, Quinn Hall, one Quinn of the Hall, another freshman, one of the four freshmen on the roster will be inserted into the game. And she promptly kicks the ball out of bounds. So Waterloo will have another throw in down at the end of the. Lady Cahawk bench into the box it goes. There's Janini, and Janini lost her place, and a chance now for Waterloo. Collins will get that out of there, says Olivia Johnson. She was in the right spot at the right time, and then the ball ends up going out of bounds over by Athletic Director Clay Smith. Another throw-in opportunity coming up here for Waterloo as we approach 28 and a half minutes to go here in this opening half. Waterloo with the ball. Out to the mids, and then up, Collinsville, nice step. Nice little intercept there by Collinsville, and Kayhawks trying to keep it going. They do. They'll get the ball out toward midfield, but Serna couldn't quite finish up. Now she finds the ball once again, but can't continue, and with it, it is Megan Young. Young sends the ball up, and Van Dyke will scoop it up. So after... Waterloo graduated 50 of their 90 goals last year. Megan Jung mm -hmm. led last year's team with 19. That leaves Liv Coulson and Grace Pohl as the leaders coming back from last year. Both of them scored nine goals a year ago. Megan Young is a dynamic player. She's played with Ella in club ball as well. Uh, she has the ability to be very elusive and get around players and, and finish, and clearly 19 goals tells me she did. Oh, yeah. That's a lot of goals. Yep. That's more goals by one person almost than Collinsville had as yeah. the Chaos scored 22 goals last year. And the returning goal scorers, each scoring one, Carly Call, Ava DiGirolamo, Allison Hennessy, and Megan Summer all scored goals last year. We've got we've got to develop or find that, that player with the goal scoring knack, you know. Yeah. Got to find that person. Yep, and that's what I asked the coach. I'm like, where are the goals going to come from? She's like, we'll find out. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the roster, they only have one forward on the roster, and that's Serna. Mm -hmm. Everybody else is either a midfielder or a defender. Well, you're starting Ava DiGiralamo as your striker, and, and no offense to Ava, but she's just not been a, an, a, an attacking player. You know, she's always been in a kind of an outside wing, so seeing her in that spot. Judasek gets the ball up to Lang, and Lang gets closed on quickly. Nice play there by Prather. And now Lang trying to stay with it. She does so. That's us. And then it's knocked out of bounds. Collinsville will have a throw in here from this near side sideline. Finishing that, finishing that point is Ava's playing a spot she's not really played. So um, she'll have to develop into that throughout the season. Throw in coming up here from Olivia Johnson. Johnson eyes things. Throws it up front, and that's off of the chest of one of the Lady Bulldog players. And then Waterloo stays with it, and they send the ball on up to Colson. Colson sends the ball into the middle of the pitch, and on the run is Kate Pohl. Kate. Trying to get around Janini. Janini closes in quickly, and that ball ends up going out of bounds, and it's going to be Waterloo's throw in over there. Janini is quick, and she's so athletic. Yeah. It's fun to watch. She is. She's going to be a uh, force next year yep. as a uh, senior 
or excuse me, a junior, junior. Mm -hmm. on uh, both basketball and soccer again next year. Here is Janini, and she'll send the ball out of bounds for it. Has a chance to go over the end line for a corner kick. Question is, what's her best sport? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. I don't, I don't know what she plays in other, you know, in the other sports. So throw in from the far side, sideline. Olive Colson with the honors now for Waterloo. Todd Duke, Brett Borm with you. 25 minutes, 20 seconds. A nice high throw, but that hits a few bodies, comes down. Collinsville got it out once, and then it goes off of the football crossbar and then down, mm. and Collinsville lives to see another day. Sure do. Boy, that was dangerous. Ball bouncing around inside, just outside that six-yard box. Just waiting for somebody to hammer it home. Fortunately, it deflected up over the top. Another corner kick coming up here for Waterloo. That'll be their second. It's a great crowd out here tonight, Todd, for the first Lady Cahawks game of the year. Well, why not, man? It's a beautiful day. It. Yeah. It's going to be a good week. Yeah. Sun's uh, almost down as the time change, of course, facilitates that. That's a header that goes over the net. And this time it will turn into a Collinsville goal kick restart. I think everybody's still tired. <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> the same thing. I'm like, 0-0 zero, zero tie last year because it was the day after we changed the clocks. Boy, I tell you what, the weather that night up in Waterloo was, was brisk. Yeah. It was brisk, cold night. And Maddie Everright comes in, one of the other freshman players here for Collinsville. And as that ball gets loose and the midfielders for Waterloo will take over. Here is Prather. Prather will send it over here to the near sideline to pull. That would be Grace Pole. And now up. And Prather with it once again. And that one's going to roll right to Van Dyke. 23-45 left to play here in this opening half. No score as of yet between Collinsville and Waterloo. That 0-0 tie last year. Collinsville outshot Waterloo 6-2 in that game. Yep, that was a good game. I mean, it was very evenly matched. Clearly, the 0-0 tie was indicative of that. But uh, Waterloo was a, a quality team that we earned a, a good, good, solid point out of that match. Yeah, Addie Johnson was in goal in that game and stopped both shots that she, she saw. That's right. I forgot forgot that she went turned into a field player like two games into the season. Yep. That ball out of bounds, and Collinsville will have a throw in. And once again, with the honors, it is Olivia Johnson. Johnson throws it in, and it goes right under Judasek. I think she jumped over the ball. A little skip rope going on there. Here is Colson. Colson takes a shot. That's well wide. And it'll be another goal kick restart coming up here for Carly Van Dyke. So far, most of the fresh I guess all freshmen have gotten into the match so far. Is that right? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, because Serena the, the started. Quinn Hall came in. Mm -hmm. Ever writes in now. And, no, I think uh, Paige Bonemeyer has not been and in She's yet. a goalkeeper. Oh, yeah, goalkeeper. that's true. Yeah. yeah. That's true, so she probably won't come in. Let's hope she doesn't have to. Right. Collinsville trying to find a little offensive push here. Bringing the ball up. That was Judasek. Judasek into the middle. Finds the foot of Alira, and then... Collinsville lost the ball for a moment, got it back, and now they lost it again. Waterloo back on the offensive push one more time. And a nice pass to Colson. Colson gets taken oh. down. Are they going to call that? No, they are not. And Collinsville brings the ball back up. To midfield it goes, but unable to connect with the pass to Everright. And she'll go back and try to retrace her steps, but instead it ends up on the foot of Thorsten. Now it comes loose for the Lady Cahawks, and in front of their own bench, they'll let it go out of bounds, and, well, I don't think they were expecting the call to go that way, or else they wouldn't have let it go out of bounds. The uh, the only reason I think that was not called a PK there at that box was uh, maybe intent, because Ella took her down. I think she might have stripped, tripped over her own feet. Collinsville brings the ball up, trying to track it down as Lang, but instead... Notmeyer is going to come out and send it across the sideline. And it'll be another throw-in restart here for Collinsville. Deep down in the offensive zone as we approach 21 minutes left to play here in this opening half. And once again, Olivia Johnson with the honors. Collinsville needs to get back to knocking that ball around like they were in the first five minutes. They've kind of gotten away from that. 
And Waterloo has pretty much dominated possession since that yeah, point. Yeah, they have. Collinsville still looking for their first shot on goal, too. That ball squeaks loose. Lang couldn't get there, and instead it finds the foot of Colson. Colson back up to midfield. Janini will take over at the Kayhawk logo. Sends it on over to the far side, and then farther in front of the Waterloo bench, and that ball out of bounds. Collinsville once again will have a throw in. Not very many players left on that bench for Waterloo. They have a short bench. Yeah, they sure do. Waterloo finds the ball and starts to work their way upfield, but nice little uh, anticipation well. there mm -hmm. by Olivia Johnson. And now Collinsville trying to get there, but being held in the process was Judasek. Kayhawks come up with it again, send it over here to the near sideline. Lang takes over and will send it back to the defense, and Janini will send mm -hmm. the ball up on the ground, but picked off there by Waterloo, and Lady Bulldogs go back to work, but they'll send it back to the defense once again, and then it'll be sent over toward the Kayhawk bench, squeaks away from everybody, and then Waterloo will send it up again. Here is Janini again. She'll send it up the sideline and trying to keep it in over there. That is uh, Quinn Hall. She does so, but then kind of has a misstep there, and Waterloo takes over once again, and this time for sure that one's going to get out of bounds on a kick by Carly Call right into her bench. <clears throat> Looks like one of the Smith twins are about to enter the match. Good luck remembering who they are. Yeah, yeah, time. yeah. Well, lucky they have numbers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be Ava. Is it Ava? Ava Smith in for Liliana Lira. Susan Smith is the mom. She is the owner of mm -hmm. Plan Shop Live and the Speakeasy Parlor. That is some good stuff there. Yeah. All right, here's Waterloo with an opportunity, and that one's going to go wide. Across the end line, so again, Carly Van Dyke will have a goal kick restart. Ava and Ella, the twins, both juniors this year. Yep, they're at the house quite a bit. Good kids. Van Dyke sending us back to work. We are over halfway through this first half. And still no score. Waterloo out shooting Collinsville right now, two to nothing. And that one was almost a giveaway. Yep. Thank God Johnson was there. Yep. Now into the circle at midfield once again, and Collinsville trying to wrestle that ball away. It'll find the foot of Morgan Lang, but then that ricochets off of one of the midfielders here for Waterloo, trying to track it down is Olivia Johnson. She does so, and then that ball ends up going out of bounds, and it's going to belong to Waterloo. Throw in coming up here from Prather. Prather sends it in. Collinsville got there momentarily first and then off of the back of the heel of Colson. And back to work, and we have a whistle. Didn't see the foul. I didn't either. That's our first whistle, isn't it? Uh, for a dead ball, I believe so. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Yeah, not the, uh, not the corner kick kind of whistles. Right. All right, so a free kick coming up here for Liv Colson from about 40 yards out. There's no need for a wall at this point. You just need to make sure you got your, your purples on your white shirts. That's exactly what they're doing. As Colson is ready to go, the senior defender for Waterloo. Stay with your runners. And she'll send it right toward the goal. No one there except for Carly Van Dyke, who plays it perfectly. Coming up on 17 minutes left to play here in this first half. Van Dyke sends the ball into the twilight sky. Come on, Morgan. Battle. I like it when the uh, sun sets a little later. Not too happy when I woke up this morning for my first day at work since the time change, and it was dark. There's a shot and another save by Van Dyke. And Van Dyke has uh, looked pretty good in goal so far in the three shots she's seen. Yeah, there's a quality shot there from, yeah. gosh, 20 probably? Yeah. Van Dyke. Sends it back to midfield once again. Taken there by Waterloo, but Collinsville intercepts after the bounce off the body. And sending the ball up is Judasek, and no one there wearing the purple and the white to make things happen on the offensive side of things. So Nottmeyer will send the ball over, and a little mistake there. Collinsville with an opportunity. Oh, oh man. Just a poke. I know. Just Couldn't get that leg out there nope. fast enough. And I'm like, if you're, she's probably thinking, man, if I was just like three more inches on my leg, I would have had mm -hmm. that. Opportunity for Collinsville goes by the wayside and he's sent back out to midfield. 
Cahawks trying to track it down once again, and over on the far side it is Hall. That ball right at midfield. Collinsville has a couple of substitutions they want to bring in. Referee say not quite yet. And the ball off of a head and all the way back to Janini. Janini looks and then sends the ball back up to midfield. She was trying to spring Everright, but overshot her, and the defenders will just send it on back to Notmeyer. Notmeyer sends it over to the far sideline, picked up there by Collinsville. Back out to midfield we go. Almost sounds like I'm about to lose my voice, man. I haven't done any play-by-play -play in over two weeks. Gosh. I know. It was a nice little break. Get over there, Borm. And a shot, and right at Van Dyke once again. Just a tad under 15 minutes to go here in this first half. No score yet between Collinsville and Waterloo. JV teams, 0-0 tie in that game. That's what the final score was last year at Waterloo in the season opener for both teams. There's a chance now for Waterloo. Cutting the ball back up is Young. Young takes a shot, and that one just goes right past the near side post. Waterloo just keeps building that pressure and pressure. I'm starting to see a lot of fatigue here in the back on this back line for Collinsville. Yeah, they've been busy. Yep. Those first games are always tough, too. Yeah, yeah and especially just, after, I, like I mentioned, everybody lost an hour of sleep, so right. probably a little tiredness coming in, too. Yeah, they, they, their legs aren't underneath them yet. Yeah. Looks like we have a switch here. Carly Call to right back. Olivia Johnson into the midfield. There is Janini chasing down the ball once again, trying to get there before it crosses the line, but can't. So Waterloo will have another throw in. And it'll be Madeline Prather with the honors. Nope. I'm going to give it up now, and I believe that is Aubrey Heck. Heck. High throw in going right toward the goal and right into the hands of Van Dyke. That was a long throw. Sure was. I'm surprised that no one could touch it with any mm -hmm. any headers going. Just fell right down into Van Dyke's hands. Remind oh. me, reminded me of the days of Evan Weber from O'Fallon, remember? Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. What a threat. I know. There is Waterloo once again with more sustained offensive pressure. And a shot and a one-hopper right to Van Dyke. Somebody's down here at the mid. At, and it's inside the circle. Is that? I believe that that is Judasek. Judasek. Yeah. Van Dyke sends it out to midfield once again. Seems like every time she sends it out to midfield, it's yeah. off of a body belonging to Waterloo. Waterloo sends it back up one more time and then back over to the midfield circle it goes. Unable to continue forward with Serna. And that ball ends up going out of bounds. Collinsville will have the throw in, and this time it will belong to Carly Call. Collinsville wants to make another substitution. As they bring Liliana Lira back into the game and out goes Ella Borm. Mm -hmm. She's got a little limp going on. I'm not sure what, what happened back there. She she has shin splints a lot, that turf. Yeah. That's terrible for uh, shin splints. I remember getting those when I was in the yeah. Army. Those things hurt. Here's Janini off of her head trying to get it on up to Judasek. Judasek, or excuse me, that is Carly Call. 2-0, not 1-0. Call trying to send it up but didn't get enough mustard on it to send it past Waterloo's midfielders. And now Waterloo going back to work once again. And here is Kate Pohl. Pohl trying to work herself around one and does so. Sends it up over to Colson. Colson sends it over to the far side right outside the corner of the box. Good job, Addie Munez. Yep, Munez takes care of that one and with her head up, sends it up but... Didn't get enough on that one either, and they're just kind of missing on these passes. Yep, they are. Here's another opportunity for Waterloo. They'll put it right in front of the 18-yard box. It bounces up for a moment, trying to track it down is Johnson. Comes free all the way back to midfield, and a shot on the goal will be a couple of bounces this time to Carly Van Dyke. I'll, I'll give her that all day long. Yeah. Van Dyke. Once again, pops it up. Out to midfield it goes, and it bounces over the head of DiGirolamo. 
And Waterloo taking over once again until that ball is kicked out of bounds by Carly Call. So it'll be another throw in here for Waterloo as we have just under 11 minutes to go here in this first half. Scoreless thus far. Collinsville right now being out shot six to nothing. Trying to get the ball into the offensive zone and get a shot on goal here. All you need is one. That's all you need. Waterloo's had some opportunities, but Carly Call has stood tall, and now we have a whistle. I think it was out of bounds over here. Maybe. maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Over the head of its intended target, back out to midfield. Collinsville trying to track it down, can't do so. Waterloo comes away with it again. Here is Gardner up into the middle for Pole. Pole dances around with the ball for a minute, trying to find a little Let's keep her out there. offensive help from her teammates, but nothing to materialize until she sends it over to the far side and a shot that's going to go well wide. And another goal kick restart coming up here for Carly Van Dyke. So far, Collins is doing a good job of, uh, yes, we're giving up shots, but at least those shots, we're, we're, we're pushing them back instead of uh, giving them shots you know, inside that 18-yard box. Man, I've got six shots on goal register, but really two of them have been tough. Correct. Doing a good job of at least uh, making them longer shots than uh, being inside the box. Yep. Call sends the ball back out not very far this time and bounces over a couple of people and then a loose ball goes right past the referee and Collinsville takes over and Waterloo intercepts, but Collinsville returns the favor. They'll send it over to the far sideline. Collinsville can't continue forward, so Waterloo will take over from there and send the ball up until Janini. Whoop, she overran the ball once again. She's aggressive. Sometimes that she aggressiveness is. will lead you to overrun a ball. Mm -hmm. And then Janini mm -hmm. goes down. She and the call, though. Yeah. Well, going to have a uh, free kick, but it's going to be from about 100 yards away. Janini will go ahead and take this one herself. And she sends a line drive shot right past midfield. Collinsville trying to corral it, and they do so. Hawks work the ball up. Here is DiGirolamo. DiGirolamo sends it over here for Lang. Lang gets double teamed, but the ball pops loose again, and DiGirolamo couldn't get there in time. But Collinsville had a uh, backup plan in Lyra until Waterloo took over, and Janini will step in front of that one. Collinsville trying to go back to work into the offensive side of things. Waterloo, they'll get there first, and they'll send the ball back over toward the far sideline right at midfield. Settled down over there and then sent up. Colson. Sends it up to pole, but Janini is there to knock the ball into the Cahawk bench. So another throw in coming up here for Waterloo. As we have eight minutes to go here in this first half. No score as of yet between Collinsville and Waterloo. Defensively so far, Collinsville has been good. Yeah. I, I, I'm pleased with the effort. Um, we're just not able to sustain any sort of possession from, from the midfield to that forward position thus far. Yeah. Been a little bit of a struggle. Yep. Here's Waterloo once again. They'll send it over here to this near sideline, and now Collinsville intercepts for just a moment. And the Cahawks back to playing some defense here. Waterloo trying to muster another shot toward the goal, and that one is Ooh. just outside the corner of the box and comes back out, and Morgan Lang trying to keep it that way, but Collinsville finally gets there and sends it back up toward midfield. Waterloo, got a couple of players there, knocks off a couple of bodies, and the Cahawks can't seem to continue moving the ball back toward midfield, so Waterloo still in possession of it in their offensive zone. Nice move there, really nice move by Lyra, and sends the ball up to midfield once again. Trying to track it down first was Serna, but couldn't quite get there, and now she's doing a little holding. Yeah, a little bit. Just a little. Lily did a great job, did everything right, just couldn't connect that pass into the forward. She either needs to either find that forward's feet or find space to play that ball into for the forward to run onto. Free kick coming from about 65 yards away, but instead of a true free kick, it'll be a pass. And Waterloo once again tries to send the ball up. Here is Megan Young. Young, about 30 yards away, will send the ball into the middle. Nice little pick up there by Lang, and Lang will send the ball all the way down to the offensive zone, but no one back there to put on any pressure. So coming way out of net is Notmeyer. And... Waterloo back to work once again off of a K-Hawk leg. <clears throat> Excuse me, belonging to Quinn Hall. I got to get back into play-by-play -play shape here. 
My voice is like cracking. Yeah. This guy had a lot of work this year. <clears throat> yeah. You know, basketball was fantastic to watch. Oh, yeah. Well, no call on that one. No. I don't know if that was a trip or just an accident. I don't think there was much contact. No. Yeah, basketball season was fun. Of course, football season was too. Yeah. That's that we knew the the, the class of 24 at least on the boys side was going to be good in just about every sport. Yep. That ball goes across the line. Collinsville will have a throw in and a couple more substitutions, one for Waterloo, two for Collinsville. And I can't see who's coming in. No, the numbers on the fronts of the jerseys are way too small. But I believe that is Everright once again. Okay. And Judasek. And Judasek. I'll yep. learn these freshman names here before long. Five minutes to go here in this first half. Collinsville with the throw in. Comes down to Judasek, but she couldn't hold on to it, trying to wrestle it back away. But Waterloo is in there instead, and that ball was crazy close to going out of bounds. Collinsville trying to pop it into the box, and the ball comes down. And on the move is Everright. Everright sends it on back now for Lang, and Lang had it go off of her, and nope, it's going to go off of a Waterloo player, so Collinsville is going to get another throw in. And here comes Carly Call to handle that responsibility. Call throws it right down for Lyra. Lyra will send it in just outside the box. Now it takes a bounce, and... Did she touch that ball before it went across sure, the line? It sure looked like it, it didn't looked it? like it, but Man. I don't think so. <laughs> I guess the uh, angle is just playing with our eyes here. Mm -hmm. So Waterloo will send the ball up the line. That one almost skirted over the yellow line as well. And then back to the defense it goes, and here is Giannini, who will chase it down and just tap it on back to Van Dyke. Van Dyke will send it up the line here for Call. It's knocked out of bounds by Waterloo. Another throw in coming up here for Collinsville. Can't tell who's down. Is it? It's Johnson. Johnson, well. I think. Well, that's not good. I can't tell. Yeah, I think that's Johnson. Yep, it is. I that's see the number five on the front. Yeah. Stops the clock with 346 left to play, so we have a injury timeout. We'll step aside for a brief moment as well, and we'll be back here on the Cahawks Sports Network. The Collinsville Education Association is a proud supporter of KayhawkSports.com and the Cahawks Sports Network. The CEA is your partner as they work to ensure quality education for our children. The CEA advocates excellence and equity in public education and represent over 400 educators in 11 schools in both Madison and St. Clair counties. For more information, you can visit the Collinsville Education Association's Facebook page or the CEA's website at collinsvillecea.org. Collinsville High School alumni Stacy Lowenstein, CHS Class of 91, Lisa Bassetto, Sarah Sulky, and Tracy Lemp, CHS Class of 94, Tony Geisen, CHS Class of 96, and Kevin Robinson, CHS Class of 99, want to wish all of our Cahawks a great year. We look forward to cheering you on and supporting you. Work hard on the court and the field, as well as in the classroom. Remember, once a Cahawk, always a Cahawk. Hashtag Cahawk family. Old Herald Brewery and Distillery in Collinsville produces their own spirits and beer on site right at the restaurant. Pair that with some of the most unique menu items around the entire metro area, and you can see why they are such a hit. They can handle you and your family, or they can handle you and your group. Throw in the occasional live entertainment, and you can see why Old Herald Brewery and Distillery is a must-stop destination in Collinsville. Old Herald Brewery and Distillery, 115 East Clay Street in Collinsville, 618-855-8027, or online at oldheraldbrewing.com. Welcome back to Collinsville High School here at Cahawk Stadium. Uh, Olivia Johnson heading toward the sideline, walking a little gingerly, but she is walking off under her own power. So positive news there, but not sure if she's going to be able to return. It would be pur pure speculation on my part. Yeah. It's a good player to lose. Yeah, your only senior. Mm -hmm. 3.45 left to play here in this first half. 
Carly Call ready for the throw-in opportunity here. And off of the head of Judasek and out of bounds. So now Waterloo with the throw-in. Here is Prather. Ball pops off of one of the Waterloo players. Collinsville trying to take over, and it gets kind of trapped there in between a bunch of ankles. And then Collinsville trying to send it back to the defensive side of things, and instead Waterloo picks that ball off. And a pop-up sent over here to this near sideline, then sent back up again by Prather. There's an opportunity for Everright, but she couldn't uh, find the ball after it rolled down her body. Kind of got away from her after that. And the Lady Calix back to playing a little defense. Having a hard time generating much offense, but thankfully the defense has played all right up to this point. Over to the far sideline and into the Cahawk bench. Well, the defense have done, have done their job. It's just a matter of, 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 of the defense connecting their passes into that midfield and then the midfield being able to maintain that possession and try and connect into your forwards. It's a pretty simple game. Unfortunately, we're just not able to hold that possession in the middle of the field right now. Yeah, we're just kind of missing passes yeah. here and there and bouncing off of body parts and unable to control. Free kick coming up here for Waterloo right at the end of the Cahawk bench. And that one struck pretty well, but it's going to be a one bouncer right to Van Dyke, but she was well off of the outside post, so that wasn't really considered a shot on goal. As we have two minutes left to play here in this first half, don't forget we have the Woods Basement Systems halftime show coming up for you. Here within those two minutes, Collinsville trying to generate a little offense before the close of this first half off of the head of Janini. And comes down, Collinsville couldn't control Turn. it, send it back. Oh. And a whistle will oh, stop the action. She got the ball. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. She, Ella Borm just cleared the ball. I mean, she, there might have been some contact, but there was certainly, uh, I don't know. So now a little closer with this free kick, and here is Liv Coulson. Still about 40 yards or so out. Mm -hmm. Even here, I'm not sure wall is necessary. I'd, I'd be more comfortable having at least one person in that wall drop off and mark inside that 18 with their runners. There is a bouncer again, well wide of the outside post. So one minute left here in this first half. No score between Collinsville and Waterloo. Van Dyke sends the ball back out to midfield. Bounces over into the Collinsville offensive zone. Waterloo trying to take it over from there. Collinsville would like to get the ball back and get one more push toward the goal and maybe get a shot off here before the end of this first half. But instead, here is Grace Pohl sending the ball back to Notmeyer. And Notmeyer will send it over to the far side. Oh, Collinsville intercepts it. and a shot that was toward the goal but ends up going well wide. That was Ava Smith. That was a good look at the goal. Yeah. Notmeyer was not in position either. Nope. Could have got a uh, little bit of a lop shot over her head. That would have had a chance to go in. Final 10 seconds left to play here in this first half. We'll see if Notmeyer can get the, uh, well, she's just going to pass it into the box. And Waterloo, I think, will be uh, content going to the locker room with a 0-0 tie. And that is the end of one half of play. No score between Collinsville and Waterloo as we welcome you in to the Woods Basement Systems Halftime Show. All things basement -y. All things basement tea is what I meant to say. Woods Basement Systems, working to keep homes dry since 1986. Woods Basement Systems, give them a call at their Collinsville headquarters at 618-708-4055. Back with the Woods Basement Systems halftime show in just a moment here on the Cahawks Sports Network. <laughs> Just because we're adults doesn't mean we don't have toys, am I right? If your adult toys consist of boats, campers, or RVs, then you need to call the GASA storage team of professionals. Winter weather in the Midwest can be quite harsh, and finding a place to properly store those expensive toys for winter can be just as rough as a Midwest winter. That's where the GASA storage team comes in. 
with outdoor self-storage and covered storage for your toys. They even have tractor trailer parking. Conveniently located at Horseshoe Lake Road in 111 in Pontoon Beach. GASA Storage for the safe storage of all of your toys. Contact the GASA Storage team. GASA Storage at gmail.com or call today. GASA Storage Team, 618-797-6100. Looking to buy a new home or sell your current home? Trust the Blaylock Group of EXP Realty with all of your real estate needs. The real estate market is hot right now, and you can trust the years of experience the Blaylock Group brings to the table. The Blaylock Group can help you find your dream home, or they can help you get top dollar for your current home. Give Peyton or Emily Blaylock a call today at the Blaylock Group of EXP Realty, 618-780-4622. That's 618-780-4622. The Blaylock Group of EXP Realty. Lottie's Cafe, Collinsville's hidden gem. Lottie's Cafe offers food, cocktails, and gaming in a great atmosphere highlighted by fast and friendly service. Lottie's Cafe also offers a unique menu that features soups and salads, sandwiches and paninis, pizza and flatbreads, appetizers and desserts, as well as breakfast. That's right, we said breakfast. Unique breakfast items, such as a breakfast stromboli, a breakfast BLT, and breakfast burritos. Lottie's also offers creative cocktails, a wine bar, the coldest beer around, and a video gaming area for those 21 and older. And don't forget the Lottie's Cafe gift certificates. Lottie's Cafe, Collinsville's hidden gem. Check them out online at Lottie'sCafe.com, on Facebook, or in person in the Strip next to the Walmart Neighborhood Market. Or call Lottie's Cafe at 618-223-8256. Lottie's Cafe, Collinsville's hidden gem. Chapman Trucking, LLC. Chapman Trucking is a local Collinsville business owned and operated by 1994 Collinsville graduate Christy Chapman. With over 10 years of experience, Chapman Trucking LLC can take care of all of the heavy lifting when it comes to hauling aggregate materials such as sand, driveway rock, dirt, boulders, and more. That includes getting your heavy work equipment to your work site where it needs to be. Give Christy a call for a free estimate at Chapman Trucking LLC, 618-960-9346 or online at chapmantruckingllc.net. Once again, we welcome you back into the Woods Basement Systems Halftime Show here at Cahawk Stadium, the season opener for both the Lady Bulldogs of Waterloo High School and your Collinsville Lady Calcs. And after one half of play, no score, and that's exactly what we had in the JV game as well. No score through both halves in that game, so a 0-0 final was that one. Lady Calcs softball won big today in four innings in their season opener at Father McGivney, 22-2. The JV baseball team, Kicked off their season today with a big 13-4 win over Bree Central. And from the ranks of the pros, the St. Louis Cardinals had a 4-0 lead earlier today and uh, ended up losing that game 11-4 down in spring training action. And the Blues are in action right now about midway, about midway through the second period, 3-1 in favor of the Blues. St. Louis had a 3-0 lead, but Boston just scored a little while ago, and that's where they stand right now at three to one. That's gonna do it for the Woods Basement Systems Halftime Show. And again, if you have water in your home that doesn't need to be there, you need to give Woods Basement Systems a call. You can do that at 618-708-4055. Second half action is what we have coming up for you next on the Cahawk Sports Network. <laughs> Todd Duke here, proud member of the Collinsville Educational Assistance Association. Whether you call us teachers' aides, paraprofessionals, or educational assistants, it all comes down to one thing, taking care of students. More importantly, your student. Yes, 
we are there for the teachers and we help them in any way possible. But our goals are in line with our teachers in that we want to see our students succeed at not only being a student, but well beyond that as we ready them for the world outside of the classroom. We are Union Strong. We are Cahawk Strong. We strive to help students reach their potential. We are the Collinsville Educational Assistance Association. Go Cahawks! Keep your ride shiny and clean with Extreme Details Vehicle Detailing in Collinsville. Owner Jay Merkel and his crew at Extreme Details believe in the value of community and in helping their community hold the value of their vehicles with a sharp looking clean ride that you and your community can be proud of. Extreme Details can handle any job, whether you drive a small car, an SUV, or even a bus or RV. No job is too big or too small at Extreme Details. Extreme Details offers scratch and oxidation removal. No matter what you drive, cars, trucks, motorcycles, boats, and more. Plus, Extreme Details can handle fleet vehicles for you and your company. Call Jay and the gang at Extreme Details at 618-977-1224. Check for periodic specials on the Extreme Details Facebook page. Put the shine in your ride with Extreme Details, 618-977-1224. Lakeside Roofing in Collinsville. Let the professionals at Lakeside Roofing protect your most important investment, your home or business. Have the elements taken a toll on your roof system? Notice a leaking roof? Maybe it's time for a free roof inspection. Regular maintenance can extend the life of your roofing system by 10 years or more. Lakeside Roofing is your winning team for commercial and residential roofing systems. Lakeside All-Star Professionals have installed, repaired, and maintained hundreds of roofs on both sides of the river. Call Lakeside Roofing today at 618-344-2800 in Collinsville or 314-241-5253 or online at lakesideroofing.com. Choose experience, choose Lakeside. First National Bank of Waterloo, with over 100 years serving the Metro East. Visit First National Bank of Waterloo at their Maryville or Collinsville locations for all of your banking, mortgage, and lending needs. Why? Super low closing costs, low construction loan rates, and they do so much to support our local communities. When you need a loan, call the Collinsville team at First National Bank of Waterloo at 618-345-1121 or visit their Maryville or Collinsville locations or online at fnbwaterloo.bank. First National Bank of Waterloo, member FDIC, an equal housing lender. CUSD 10 residents have an opportunity to improve our schools without increasing the property tax rate by voting yes on March 19th. The zero rate change ballot initiative will provide funds to improve school safety and security, upgrade heating and cooling equipment, and make facilities more accessible to disabled students, staff, and visitors. For more information, visit yesforsaferschools.org. This message was brought to you by the Citizens for Safer Schools. Vote yes for the Unit 10 ballot initiative. Looking for good food, good times, and good people? Look no further than the Bridge Inn in Caseyville. Just over the bridge from the Cahawk Stadium, Bridge Inn features a friendly and courteous staff that serves up the coldest drinks and the best food in the Metro East. Lunch and dinner is available daily with a breakfast menu every Saturdays and Sunday morning. And don't forget about fantastic fish fry Fridays. Bridge Inn also features pool tournaments on most weekends and a gaming area for the over-21 crowd. Bridge Inn in Caseyville. Check them out at 519 North Main Street in Caseyville. Call for carryout orders at 618-344-3530. The best is yet to come at the Bridge Inn in Caseyville. 618-344-3530. The Collinsville Area Community Foundation is our community's charitable foundation. We connect people, support programs, and guide resources to help our community thrive. Our board is made up of local leaders that donate their time and expertise to identify opportunities for long-term community impact in and around Collinsville. Find out more about scholarships, grants, and ways to give back to the city we love by visiting CollinsvilleFoundation.com. And once again, we welcome you back to Cahawk Stadium here on the campus of Collinsville High School, just about ready for second half action. We switch ends of the field, so Collinsville will be defending the goal to your right, and Waterloo will be doing the same thing to your left. No score after 40 minutes in the books. We have another 40 minutes to go, 
And obviously this is a non-conference game, so there will be no overtime in case it stays that way. And we are uh, just about ready to go. Well, the referees are a little tardy coming out of the locker rooms over there. <laughs> you know, it's a hard job. <laughs> yeah, they're enjoying themselves. I'm sure. Nice night. Starting, yeah. to, starting to get on the cool side, though. Yeah. I'll take it, though, for uh, the beginning of March. For sure. Or the middle of March almost now. For sure. I know uh, it'll be nice out for softball tomorrow. Wednesday's supposed to be nice as well. And then by the time Friday rolls around and we have that baseball game for you at GCS Ballpark, it's supposed to be like 55. Oh, gosh, that's miserable baseball I know. weather. Yeah, but I want GCS Ballpark. I'll be in a uh, nice, toasty, warm press box there. That's true. Yeah. Got that much going for me. The next day is my uh, daughter's 20th birthday. We're planning to start with a uh, St. Patrick's Day parade in Pacific and then go out and get some lunch. Then we're going to go do Top Golf. Mm hmm. And then come home and do cake and ice cream and all that fun stuff. So uh, mm -hmm. it's supposed to be, I think, 65 and sunny that day, maybe. Well, be a little cold in the morning for that parade, but other than that, it should warm up. Her being 20 only means one thing for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's that? You're old. I know. I already knew that though. All right, we are back to action. There's a slow roller to Carly Van Dyke. Collinsville out shot in that first half, six to nothing. So let's see if a uh, little. Adjustment action will uh, give Collinsville a little bit more momentum going forward here in the offensive zone. Carly's got to get those punts up. Yeah. Collinsville trying to work it up and do just that. Here is a push that's out of bounds and off of the foot of Taylor Thorsten. Collinsville will have a throw in. And this time it will belong to Addie Munoz. Munoz directing traffic. Wants everybody to go deep. <laughs> Go long. Go long. <laughs> Collinsville with the ball in the offensive zone. They had it there early in the first half and then kind of got shut out from the offensive zone there as the game progressed. And this time, nothing different as Notmeyer takes care of that one. She'll send it back out toward midfield. Takes a bounce right toward the midfield stripe, the 50-yard line on the football field. And that is off of the head of Munoz. And down it goes. And Waterloo trying to take over. But getting in the way of that progress was Ella Borm. Borm moves the ball up the sideline, but Waterloo takes over from there. Back to the defense it goes. Collinsville sends it over here to this near side and just past the try there of Munoz. And Collinsville again trying to send the ball up to the offensive side of the field. Can't quite accomplish that. Back out to midfield. A lot of bouncing balls here, Todd. Yeah, it's got to sure get is. on the ground and we got to get control. Yeah, hard to control the ball when it's bouncing mm -hmm. around like that. Lily does a decent job of that. Lily does have, unfortunately, ball got out of bounds. Um, Lily does have the foot skill to control the ball, control the pace of the play, and find feet. I don't know if that could have been considered a throw in because she caught that ball before she crossed the yellow line. Yeah. The referees, if they wanted to be sticklers about it, probably could have. Collinsville back into the offensive zone, trying to make something happen here, but Waterloo gets a hold of the ball first and sends it over to the far side, takes a bounce back toward the middle. And Waterloo once again trying to control the ball. Collinsville, they come away with it for just a moment. Oh. And uh, another little nice move there by Serna. Her shot goes well wide and across the end line. So it'll be a goal kick restart coming up here for Notmeyer. Just underway here in the second half. By the way, I told you it was a 3-1 Blues lead. Well, they uh, reviewed a play on the... Uh, Boston goal and took it back saying they were offside and since then Brandon Saad has scored a goal so Colin or excuse me St. Louis now up four to nothing over one of the top teams in the NHL in the Boston Bruins who now has Pat Maroon on their team oh gosh I know it's gonna be weird seeing him in a somehow, Bruins sweater somehow he always finds himself on a know, cup contender on a cup contender yeah sure right. does he's hurt right now though so they say Is he's he? still a couple of weeks away from being able to get back to game action but yeah hmm. Always seems to be in the uh, right team. The uh, Patty Maroon. Patty Maroon. See, Vladimir Tarasenko got traded. That's a ball. I did see that. Yeah, to the uh, Florida Panthers. So now him and Mr. Kachuk on the same team together. Nice, nice, nice. Nice have, for them. They've not been following hockey this year just because of the start they got off to. And yeah, kind I'm, of a, I'm a fair weather fan, not going to lie. I'm a uh, more, normally a much bigger fan, but the last couple of years have uh, kind of soured me a bit. 
Here's a one bouncer to Van Dyke. Did you think Chief should have been fired? Uh, probably. He lost the room. Okay. All right. I don't think they were responding to him very well anymore. Seems like every time you fire a head coach in any major sport, the uh, result is good play for a while, and then I think they've kind of leveled off since Bannister has taken over as well. Yeah. Guess you can't fire the players, huh? Nope. That's what they say anyway. All right. I don't know. If I was Army, I'd probably be like, you know what? You're fired. I take back your contract. Oh, yeah. Your contract is now null and void. Collinsville trying to work the ball back up into the offensive side. They cross really? midfield, pass up the sideline. Collinsville on the move and still on the move. They cut it into the middle, but there is Waterloo once again to thwart any kind of progress. Collinsville's played very well defensively, but so is Waterloo. Yeah, Morgan Lang was streaking down that right side. She was wanting the ball, yelling for the ball, and it just didn't. Just didn't find her. Yeah, here's Janini trying to keep that ball outside the box. She does so, and that ball's over the line. Off of one of the Waterloo players, so Collinsville will get the throw in over there. Thirty-four minutes and about twenty seconds left here in this second half. No score as of yet. Two teams played each other last year and did not score. JV already played their game here tonight and did, did not, not score. score. So goals are hard to come by here in the first game of the season. I still say it has a lot to do with the time change. That's, just, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Okay. Here is Collinsville with an opportunity and then a uh, bad bounce after Serna got a, a foot on that ball first and Waterloo will send it back up. But Collinsville's defense is there once again. And the Cahawks bring the ball up and it gets by them. And another an opportunity here for Waterloo, but thankfully that ball didn't go in the direction that the goal scorer wanted or the uh, ball carrier wanted it to go, and it ends up going out of bounds. Collinsville with another throw in. Janini's doing a good job of cleaning up the mess. Yeah. Off the head, right back to where it came from. That would be Addy Munez. Oh. Munez couldn't control the ball. It ends up going out of bounds, so now Waterloo will have a throw in just outside the box. Nice to see Alex Paz back at work doing his thing, what he loves to do, taking all these pictures. Yep, yep. After a uh, successful successful liver transplant, he's done all the all the hard work, and Collinsville got it out of there. That's speaking of hard work. That was close. Yes, it was. I think it was Carly Call able to clear that ball off that six-yard line. I think that was off the three-yard line. Well, yeah, it might have been closer. <laughs> You're right. You're right. And in hockey terminology, that would have been through the blue paint. Yeah. There are the Cahawks trying to get the ball back again and again. It ends up going out of bounds, so Waterloo will have yet another throw in just outside the box. 32 and a half minutes to play here in the second half. Throw in coming in from Lindhorse. Collinsville rejects it, comes back to Lindhorse. She'll pop it back into the box, and this time Carly Call, or excuse me, Carly Van Dyke will. Track it down without any uh, possibility of anyone wearing the orange and white out there. Get your Carly straight. I know. Get your Ellis and Ava straight. Yeah. Thankfully, I only have one Johnson to work with this year. Oh, it was tough with the volleyball, man, when I had three of them on the same team. Yeah. <clears throat> Another throw in coming up here for Waterloo. And again, it'll be handled by Lindhorst. Lindhorst throws it in, and in front of the box, it comes down. Waterloo turns around once again, sends it, and it's rejected there by Collinsville. It comes onto the foot of DiGirolamo, bouncing around off the bodies. There was a little physicality going on there. Ooh, and that was, that was gonna, back and forth, Yeah, that man. was back and forth. They could have let it go. I mean, it was a battle there between Grace Pohl mm -hmm. and Ava DiGirolamo, and they end up calling Ava. Yep. So a free kick from just outside the near side corner of the 18-yard box. And once again, it is Liv Colson. Collins will need to stay with their runners. Colson. Oh, gosh. Will pass they it instead. Space. And a little she, missed shot there by Lindhorst. She had about seven more yards to dribble if she wanted to dribble it in. Well, she could have at least settled the ball down and got a yeah, true shot. Right. She saw it, shot it while the ball was bouncing and never got a true shot off. So Collins did not see that runner or that player there into space. Yeah. Totally ignored her. 
Another whistle on the play. Collinsville is, what are we doing? We're going to have a free kick? I don't know. All the way up there? About the 40. Okay. 38. So Collinsville with a free kick that's less than 100 yards from the last free kick we had. Now, let's crash this box. Kick on the way. Like High. It. It's going to go into the front of the box and be rejected by Waterloo. Ball still popping around over there in the box. Trying to settle it down. Hawks do, and a shot toward the goal will go wide. Lady Hawks back in action tomorrow night at Granite City. That'll be another tough match, Todd. Yeah, especially on back-to-back -back nights to open the season. Yeah, That's tough. That is that that is going to be tough. Yeah, Waterloo plays tomorrow night as well. They'll have their home opener against Belleville East tomorrow night. Yeah. Granite's got some players. I know they're strong in the back, and I know they got a goal scorer up top. So, yep. See what we can. Granite City's always tough in soccer, boys and girls. Well, the, the 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 boys program had fallen off there for a few years. I thought they had a, a respectable team this year. Um, that one sent back to Van Dyke, and she'll send it right back out to midfield. And it is off of the legs of Serna, and now over here and over the head of Quinn Hall. Collinsville has been playing girls soccer since 1984. That was the first year. And these two teams have only met three times. And that first one was in 2021. Collinsville won 2-1. to one. Waterloo won in 2022, four to one, and they had the zero zero tie last year. So these two teams are one one and one versus each other. Huh. I'm surprised that's all we've played them is three times. I know. There's a shot that one off of the backside of Ella Borm and taken care of there by Van Dyke. Yeah, I was going through uh, some of the old yearbooks looking to uh, try to get an idea when these two teams played and. I had to go all the way up to 2021 before That's I found crazy. it. I know. And the first few years, about the first four, five, or six years, the Lady Calx only played teams from either across the river in Missouri, and a few times they played some teams from Indiana before everybody else got on board okay. with girls' soccer. I think the first Illinois team that Collinsville played was Granite City. I think that was, I think, year four of the program. Look at you, man, just educating the public. I try, man. I do the best I can. Oh, man. I learn from you, buddy. I try to keep everybody informed as well as I can. I spent a lot of time in the school library earlier this year, and I took pictures of all the sports pages in all of the yearbooks dating all the way back to 1926. So I got them all on an external hard drive, and I have them at my disposal whenever I want to bring them up and start surveying things or looking for stuff. Huh. Yeah. Here is Waterloo once again, and in front of the box, and get that out of here. Nice clear by Collinsville and Ashley Janini. Now if Collinsville can just move the ball forward and get a little offensive push of their own, speaking of push. Yeah, that was a two-hand. <laughs> yeah, Quinn Hall did that and got away with it. And Collinsville out to midfield. Here is Judasek. Judasek had that ball rejected. Comes all the way back out, and a little tap by Ella Borm back to Van Dyke. Van Dyke will send the ball back out to midfield. Falls down without anyone touching it as of yet. And seems like Collinsville, man, sometimes instead of playing the ball, they play the body. Yeah, they're, you're right. There's a chance for Waterloo. They'll send a cross pass right in front, but Van Dyke is there, no problem at all. I don't know if they're afraid that they, they, they can't turn get, it over. get to the ball or can't, yeah, turn it over. Can't compete when they get it? I don't know, but they need to improve there. Here is Janini trying not to give away a turnover. So speaking of turnovers, that one goes right into the bench and right into the big Gatorade jug. 26 minutes, 10 seconds left to play here in this second half. No score between Collinsville and Waterloo. David Deeds checks back in for Quinn Hall. Throw in for Collinsville right at the end of the Waterloo bench, and then it goes right back into the bench. Nice little catch there by Chad Holden, the head coach in his 24th year 
as the head coach at Waterloo for girls soccer. Collinsville picks off the ball, sends it up to midfield, and then couldn't contain. So Waterloo will get another opportunity with an offensive push and an opportunity for Colson. And Colson oh. trying to work herself around and a shot on goal. That's the first shot on goal that we've had here in the second half. That's the seventh shot on goal for Waterloo. Colson had Janini turned around. That was a good scoring opportunity. Only two corner kicks in this game. They both came in the first half and they both belong to Waterloo. Come on, Addy, we gotta play, we gotta play white here. Another opportunity here for Waterloo, but leading herself just a little bit too far. Uh-oh, but then Megan Young gets the ball right back, sends a, tries to send a shot toward goal. Here's Colson once again, and that one's in. Yeah. So Liv Colson breaks the 0-0 tie. 24-55 left to play here in this second half. So that's unfortunate. So Janini's showing a little fatigue here as well. She's worked hard. She saved, yep. saved us a lot this game. So Liv Colson, who did not register a goal last year, according to my stat sheet, gets on the board this year. And she's a senior, so that kind of surprises me. Either that or I took her off accidentally. <laughs> hmm. I tried to go through and just take off all the seniors that have graduated. Maybe I took her off by mistake. I don't know. Either that or maybe she just didn't play last year. So Collinsville has to play an uphill battle as the Chaos trail one to nothing as we approach 24 minutes left to play here in this second half. Back to the defensive side of things for Waterloo. Now they can control things here and keep the ball away from Collinsville. But there's a turnover, Collinsville with an opportunity. No one there to kind of help out DiGirolamo, so she has to try to do it herself. And Collinsville will earn a throw in just outside of the box over here on the near side. And once again, with the honors, it will be Addie Munoz. I know Janini is your best defender and probably your best athlete on this team right now. You're down one goal. Do you consider do you consider putting her up top and see if she can generate any any sort of offense? Yeah. I, I, I'm just yeah. spitballing. Spitballing here, seeing yep. what sticks. Yeah. I mean, I know you don't want to lose four to nothing, but I mean this game is still, you know, within reach. One nothing. Looks yeah. Just a, just a thought. Get a little pinch in from the defensive side. I just don't know who you put back there at sweeper. That's, yeah. that's the million dollar question too. Okay. At midfield and it comes right back to where it came from and that would be Lyra, Liliana. Sends it over to the far side trying to spring free Morgan Lang but Lang ran out of room. And it comes down over onto the near sideline. Carly Call gets a little bump from behind by the goal scorer Liz Colson. Liv Colson, excuse me. And it ends up underneath the Waterloo bench. So a throw in coming up here for the Lady Bulldogs as we approach 22 and a half minutes to go here in this second half. Back the other way we'll go. Collinsville will get the throw in. Who's that? Uh, I do not Quinn know. It's too far away for me to see a number. number yeah. Okay. Coming in at right back. That's because uh, Chris Keller's got binoculars over you there. You can see, but yeah. you can't. Binoculars don't work very well with play-by-play. Play. Okay. Binoculars don't work very well with play-by-play. Play. Not when I, you know, it's a brand new season and I got names to learn and yep. I can't look down and at my sheet and do binoculars like that. It doesn't work. I've tried. I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Munez. Sends the ball on up to Lyra. Be there, Lily. Yep. Sometimes I think they just spin and shoot, hoping for somebody to be there, and it doesn't always work out. This is trouble. This is trouble. Yep. Here's another opportunity for Waterloo, and that one goes right to Van Dyke. Twenty-one twenty left to play here in this second half. One nothing in favor of Waterloo. 
Collinsville looking for the equalizer. Yeah, midfield comes down. Who wants it? Trying to send it up was Morgan Lang. Intercepted there by Waterloo and the Lady Bulldogs on another offensive push. Oh, Into the box oh it goes. Coulson with another opportunity and she'll score on back-to-back -back goals. And Waterloo extends their lead to two to nothing. Two to nothing, and that comes about five minutes, excuse me, four minutes after the first goal. Yeah. A little born Mr. Mark there. I think she's shown some signs of fatigue and lost her player. So the Kayhawks were already facing an uphill battle, being down one to nothing, and now that deficit has reached two to nothing. So Colson gets back-to-back -back goals in a matter of four minutes. And Waterloo back to controlling the ball once again here at midfield. Into the midfield circle. Well, it didn't quite make it that far. Collinsville trying to take over after that, but Waterloo gets there first. And then off of uh, Munez. And another opportunity here. Megan Young puts on a nice move, sends it into the middle for Colson once again, looking for the hat trick. Colson is, and there it is. It. There it is. Liv Colson, in a matter of about five minutes, has gotten herself a natural hat trick. Well, this game just became a little lopsided. Mm -hmm. Collinsville. Having a hard time keeping Waterloo out of their offensive zone. And although they uh, managed to do that enough times in the first half, things are kind of catching up with the Lady Chaos here in the second half. And we have another new player in for Waterloo, and I don't have a 17 on my roster. Kind of glad this is the only time we play them. <laughs> yeah, me too. So Waterloo up three to nothing. They go back to work. Collinsville They're kind of uh, playing in desperation mode now. Okay, Hawks back on their heels. A 0-0 game quickly in five minutes mm. turns into a three nothing game. That's how quickly they can strike. And again, you know, when you're playing in your defensive end the entire match. It just it just wears on your defense. Yep. Collinsville still has not registered a shot on goal in this one. Out to midfield. And once again, Waterloo will send it down into the offensive side of things. And Van Dyke will just let that ball go ahead and roll out of bounds. Finally does. I was going to wonder for a minute if it had enough steam to get there. I guess there was a... Uh, Foul called at midfield. So a free kick coming up here for Waterloo. And it's on the way. Whoa. That's a rocket shot, but it's well wide. Where's she been on their set pieces? I don't know. Here? Yeah, that was uh, quite the display of power there with that right leg. Yeah. Coming up on 18 and a half to go here in this second half. Collinsville trailing now three to nothing. And they'll send it over here to this side for DiGirolamo and DiGirolamo couldn't find the pass. Just giving the ball away. Yep, directly to Lyra, trying to get Lyra, but totally missed out on that pass. Now the ball ricochets off another Collinsville player and Waterloo comes up with it again until they find Carly Call. Call, trying to step pass. There you go. And finally gets the ball up now to Lyra. Lira back right through the middle to Judasek. Judasek over onto the far side sideline. Kayhawks trying to get something going into the offensive side of things, but that ball was uh, picked off as there was a couple of defenders there to squeeze off, squeeze off its intended target. <clears throat> Excuse me. Quick passes, ladies. Back out to midfield. 
Oh, boy. Pass back, and Janini almost missed that one, but stayed with it long enough to get Collinsville back going in the right direction. But then that pass banks off of one of the Waterloo players and then skips right under the legs of Addie Munoz and out of bounds. Our mids and our forwards are not finding gaps. They're not finding space for our defenders to play into. Is this at Johnson returning? Yeah, it is. Okay. I didn't expect to see her back in this game, but I didn't either. She comes back in. Out to midfield off of the head of Serna, and Serna then finds the uh, tangled feet there of Lindhorse and falls down but gets right back up and chases the ball back down again, or at least trying to. Waterloo, well, they'll keep away, and that's what the Lady Bulldogs want to do right now is just play keep away. Unless they get an opportunity to score, that one ends up going out of bounds and a right call there by the ref, the line judge, if you will. Collinsville with another throw in. That one picked up first by Waterloo and then Smith will send it over here to this side and picked up once again by Megan Young and now it goes into the box and Van Dyke will have no problem taking care of that one. We approach 16 minutes to play here in this second half. Three nothing in favor of Waterloo on a natural hat trick by Liv Colson. Three goals in a span of five minutes. Yeah, she was just able to find space and yeah. once she got into that space, she was able to finish. Waterloo back on the offensive attack with a little skip job that's going to go well wide. So Van Dyke will retrieve a new ball. And she'll send us all back to action here. I feel like this game is going forever. Yeah. Especially when you're losing three to nothing. Yeah. Time seems to slow down a little bit. Ball sent over to the far sideline. No one there, right? Almost into the golf cart. So a throw in coming up here for Waterloo. Up the line it goes, and Waterloo back to work. Janini will try to get there first, and she does so. Banks it off of the ball carrier's feet, but then got it right back for a moment, but then couldn't continue forward. And a ball right at the bubble, and another opportunity here for Waterloo. That's Young. She couldn't pull the trigger. Collinsville finds the loose ball and sends it back out to the midfield area, but no one there to uh, take it home for Collinsville. And now popped up into the air and over to the far sideline again off of the foot of Olivia Johnson. And it'll belong to Waterloo once again. I think Collins' legs are just tired. They're just doing anything they can to clear the ball out. Not putting a whole lot of thought process into where they're playing it. Trying to clear it. That's all they're trying to do right now. Yep. No sustained momentum on the offensive side of the pitch, though for the Lady Cahawks tonight. Nope. And here's a loose ball, but that's going to be taken care of by Van Dyke before anyone can get in. <clears throat> 14 minutes to play here in half number two. Todd Duke, Brett Borm with you. We kick off our, wasn't that an arm ball, hand ball? Sure looked like yeah, that. Yeah, sure did. Now okay, she got that's it. a late call. <laughs> <laughs> she got it. Yeah. Just getting the spring season started. Got some Lady Calc softball for you tomorrow afternoon from the Collinsville Sports Complex. We should be on the air around 4.10. First pitch scheduled for 4.30. And then I am uh, off until Friday. Got the grandkids coming to town. They live down in Heron, and then this is their spring break week. Okay. So they're coming up uh, Wednesday night, so we're hanging out with them Wednesday and Thursday. They're coming up for the... Uh, for the daughter's birthday, that would be their aunt. Uh huh. I don't know what we got to call on, but we'll take it. Yeah. I Let's see somebody float one up there into this night sky over that goalie's head. It'll be Judasek who will take this free kick from about 35 yards away. It's a little far, but we can hope. Okay. On the way and over the net. Whew. 
Oh, she's got more leg strength than I thought. Yeah. There's a little bit of a wind out there as well. You yep. can hear it over the microphone. I'm not really sure which direction. I know it's coming from the south. A little bit of a bend on it, too. Yeah. Don't know if the wind got underneath that ball and sent it a little higher than what she wanted, but that could very well be it. Goal kick restart coming up here for Nutmeyer. All the way out of bounds it goes. So Collinsville will have a throw in into their offensive zone. Comes down. Collinsville trying to corral it. They'll send it right back to where it came from, and then Waterloo will take it over from there. Another push up for the Lady Bulldogs on the offensive side of things. But Collinsville has Janini back there. Got a foot on it, but then it banked right off of the shins of one of the Waterloo players, and then Janini kind of got yanked down from behind. No call on that one. I don't know if she got yanked down or slipped, but at any rate, didn't look very good. Now Janini trying to step in front and a shot right on goal. And a save there by Van Dyke. Waterloo has put 11 shots on goal in this game. Three of them have went in. Out to midfield it goes. And out of bounds. Looking at this roster, while well, that ball's out of bounds, I'm wondering if we're going to have enough legs on this team. I mean, it's not a super deep roster, not a lot of numbers. I certainly hope these girls can get their legs and fitness with them. Otherwise, it's going to be a challenge. Yeah, they take away the 11 starters, and you got five girls left on the bench. I mean, I'm looking at, uh, looking at this roster. I think there's only one player that hasn't been in the match, and that's the, the dual roster player, Hayden Reg. Yeah. I think everybody else is has seen some sort of minutes besides Bonenmar. Yeah, I think you are correct. So the question is, do they have enough depth? You know how injuries can build. You've seen oh it with the yeah. boys. Oh, yeah. Here is another opportunity for Waterloo. Here is Young, circles, and a shot and a save by Van Dyke. And then a return shot and another wow. save by Van Dyke. Great job by Carly Van Dyke. Yeah, she's been busy, that's for sure. She uh, she could put up some numbers this year. Yeah. Off of the head of one of the Waterloo players, then off of the head of one of Collinsville's players. I believe that was Serna, but couldn't get it going in the proper direction. And now here is Young once again. Young, I believe, set up two of the Colson goals. Collinsville going back to work. Here is Judasek, Ooh. and that's a foul. That's a foul. So another free kick coming up here for Collinsville, but this one's going to be from about 80 yards away. Taken by Ashley Janini, as we have nine and a half minutes to go here in this second half. Janini sends the ball up, back out to midfield, or towards it anyway. Waterloo takes over from there. Lady Bulldogs bring it up once again into the offensive zone. Rejected there by Johnson. And it goes back to Olivia. And she sends it up. Nobody there. No one home just outside of the midfield circle. Munoz will just send the ball out of bounds. It'll be a throw in coming up here for Waterloo. 8.50 to play. Second half action. 3-0 in favor of Waterloo. All three goals coming in the second half. All three goals off of the foot of Liv Colson. She, by the way, is just one of two seniors on the roster for Waterloo. Her and Olivia Gardner. I don't think I've called Olivia Gardner's name all game. I don't think you have either. Into the box it goes. Collinsville living dangerously. They get the ball out finally. And comes out to Serna, and then that ball was spinning out of bounds, and then when it hit the ground, it just popped right back inbounds. Oh. And uh, picked off pass there. Another opportunity for Waterloo, but Collinsville has three yep. players back where that ball is, but not going to matter. Munez is called for a trip, and Waterloo's going to have a free kick here from about 30 yards out. Here's that big kick. Yeah. Who is this? Aubrey Heck. I 
That wind's blowing now. It is. It's blowing. The, I think it's going to hold up here. Yeah. Ooh. That ball was uh, just struck wrong. Yeah. But the way the wind was blowing, I thought it was going to possibly hold that ball up in the air. All right, yeah, because it's coming yeah. right in the press right box the window press here. Box, yeah. It's a little chilly. Just a little, not too bad. That sound coming across the microphone mm -hmm. is not very good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here is Waterloo once again on another offensive push. That one might be just a little bit too far. Collinsville gets there first and sends it over the sideline. And it'll be a throw in for Waterloo over on the far side. We have 645 left to play here in this second half. I think the wind kept that one up for a while. Lady Calc softball coming your way tomorrow. Baseball coming your way Friday. Of course, we are uh, over a week away from boys volleyball kicking off. They don't kick off until the 19th. And how do you project their season to be? That's going to be tough, man. They lost all of their premier players from last year. Everybody that had any kind of meaningful stats graduated, wow. except for Stanley Carnahan. Stanley, I didn't know he was a volleyball player. Yeah, huh. Stanley Carnahan and Solomon Talbot. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. So I think uh, baseball has the most experience coming back for all the uh, the four sports that for I sure. cover in the spring. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> that's a deep that's a deep senior laden roster. It is. Got about uh, five guys playing. Collegiate baseball on scholarships from that roster. And, mm -hmm. plus, you got Darren Pinnell that's on a football scholarship. Mm -hmm. He's back playing baseball for one final season wearing the Kayhawk uniform. I heard he was moving to the outfield. I don't know. I have no idea what's going on yet. I just got a roster. That's all I have. Yeah, I know. I thought I, somebody had told me that. Yeah. Into the box it goes. Waterloo looking for uh, yet another goal. And here is Young. Sends it up in front. And a little bit of a miss hit there, but then... Collinsville did a nice job getting a body in front of that would-be shot. And the ball continues to bounce around just outside the box. And a cross will be knocked out of the box by Collinsville. Waterloo retreats once again, trying to set it back up for yet another goal-scoring opportunity. That one banks off of the shins, I believe, of Carly Call. And Collinsville will work the ball up. Have not spent a lot of time in the offensive zone tonight, have the Lady Kayhawks. Not at all. Have we had a corner kick? No, we have not. Yeah. There's only been two. Waterloo had both of them, and both of them came in the first half. Matter of fact, probably, what, three or four minutes apart? Yeah. Yeah. Waterloo trying to send it back into the box again, and they do, and a bouncer will be handled by Van Dyke with four and a half to go here in the second half. Assistant coach and JV head coach Sidney Carroll due to join us in the post-game show. Coach Sid. She's a busy person, man. She's Mm -hmm. Takes care of the JV team for both the boys and the girls. Yep. She does a good job. Yeah. No, Fre not, not, boys. not the boys. Freshman, Freshman boys, boys. Yeah. yeah. JV girls. Jeff Hayes is the JV coach for the boys. Bodies fall. Collinsville comes away with it, and a late whistle will stop any action you have. Another free kick coming up here for Waterloo. And I believe once again they'll bring Aubrey Heck in for this free kick. This one from about 35 yards away. Oh, whoa, what happened? I don't know. I lost my feed. I lost my feed, man. Did I already run out of time? I thought I had this thing scheduled till like 8.30. Maybe not. Nope, I lost my feed. I got to do this all over again. <clears throat> Play it. Play it. 
Do we have no audio either? Oh, uh, yeah, we got audio. Got audio, no video? Yeah. Oh, it's just damn radio days. Yeah, well, that's the way it happens sometimes. Two and a half minutes left. Okay, Alex hoping to get out of this with a 3 0 deficit. All right, now let's see if my uh, feet will pop back on here. Should. Out at midfield. I guess I wasn't paying enough attention to what I was doing the first time. <laughs> All right, where are you? Come on. <clears throat> there we go. We're back on for the final minute 45 anyway. <laughs> As Waterloo holds the advantage, three to nothing. Gosh, I just cannot. Cannot get any possession moving forward. No, it's been really tough. Yeah. Kind of like playing in quicksand. Can't get the ball moving in the right direction for a sustained period of time. Uh -uh. Waterloo, well, push it back upfield, though. It is just game number one, a long season left to go, so hopefully we can get things worked out and figure out a way to get that ball down into the offensive zone just a little bit more. Here's Munoz, sends it up, and it comes right back. One minute, One minute to go here in this second half, says Mr. Chris Kettler over the PA system. And Collinsville will have a throw in. And as the Lady Calx try to get a little offensive push go, excuse me, going on here in the uh, inside the final minute. Well, Waterloo takes over once again, and Olivia Johnson there trying to do her part, nice. as is Smith. And here comes Johnson with it. Johnson gets taken down from behind. Now we'll have a free kick coming up for Collinsville, but <coughs> Lady Calx are running out of time. Ashley Janini will take this. Just outside the yellow circle border around the Kayhawk logo at midfield. And back inside the circle it goes as Waterloo tries to fight off a offensive push here by Collinsville. That's off of the backside. That hurt. Yeah. Yeah, she, sure. reached, she reached out and grabbed her back. I believe that was Prather. You can hear that smack all the way up here. Here is Collinsville, and at the buzzer, they get probably would have been their first shot on goal if time didn't run out. All right, Brett Borm, thanks for the visit, man. We appreciate you. I know you'll be back here on uh, Thursday with uh, Zach Roseman, but uh, tough, tough, uh, tough way to go for Collinsville tonight. You know what? I was pleased with the first 60 minutes of the match. Collinsville was able to keep keep uh, the Highland or Highland Bulldogs, Waterloo Bulldogs, you know, off the score sheet. And then, you know what? It was just a cascade effect after that 20-minute mark of the second half. Yeah, you know, and after Liv Colson scored that first goal, she was on fire. Yep, she sure was. Yeah. All right, sir, thank yep. you very much for the visit. We'll talk to you down the line. Yep. That is Brett Borm. Time for us to move into the post-game show, brought to you tonight by Chiropractic Works in Collinsville, owned and operated by Dr. Chris McCluskey. He and his crew are focused on helping as many people as possible live high-quality lives through chiropractic care and wellness. You can visit Dr. McCluskey at Chiropractic Works in Collinsville, 410 Regency Center, just off of the Beltline Road in Collinsville. Give them a call at 618-343-3602 or online at chiropracticworkscollinsville.com. Lady Calx lose the season opener tonight, 3 to nothing. post-game show. Comes your way next on the Kayhawks. The Ortho Gold TRT tissue regeneration machine is revolutionary new technology. It's known as a shockwave machine. In the hospital setting, it's lithotripsy. The machine looks sort of like an ultrasound head, but it's much different technology. It drives sound waves into tissue at 3,500 miles an hour. It's a three to five minute non-invasive treatment. This is revolutionary technology. It's great for acute, which means you know injured uh, tissue. Uh, new injuries per se, also chronic conditions. We have many people who have canceled knee replacements and shoulder replacements and treated lots of plantar fasciitis, foot, ankle problems. Overall, the OrthoGold TRT uh, soft wave machine is revolutionary technology. We've been very excited to bring it to our practice and we've already helped a tremendous amount of people with it and we're looking forward to helping a, a, a lot more.
Pro Tees in Caseyville is your place for custom apparel and has been for over 20 years now. Why? All Pro Tees can handle any size project, big or small, and they specialize in large group orders. At All Pro Tees, quality is number one on their list of priorities, as is evident by their excellent service staff. Did we mention All Pro Tees has over 20 years of experience? They can even help with fundraisers and event merchandising for your group. And of course, All Pro Tees is your destination for everything Collinsville Cayhawks. So for all of your apparel needs, for civic groups, sports teams, business outings, or even a family reunion, your apparel needs stop at All Pro Tees. All Pro Tees in Caseyville at 2240 South Morrison Avenue. Online at allprotees.com. Right across the street from Cayhawk Stadium. All Pro Tees, 618-344-2200. No one likes a dirty house. It's work that almost no one wants to do. Why not get someone to do that work for you? Kara Gray with Rags to Riches Cleaning Service would love to take that task off your to-do list. Kara is a homegrown Collinsville High School graduate and the owner of Rags to Riches. From floors to ceilings, from baseboards to light fixtures, Rags to Riches can clean them all. No job is too big or too small. Call Kara Gray at Rags to Riches Cleaning Service to schedule a free estimate today at 618 618- 979-9634 or visit Rags to Riches Cleaning Service on Facebook. Looking for a new place to catch the game with cold drinks and great food? Look no further than 1101 Bar and Grill in Caseyville. 1101 Bar and Grill features pizza, burgers, wraps, and salads, plus seven large screen TVs to catch the latest Cayhawk games and all the pro sports across the spectrum, plus all the college football and basketball you can handle. 1101 Bar and Grill in Caseyville, 1101 Caseyville Road, right across the street from Cayhawk Stadium. Call 1101 Bar and Grill for carryout orders at 618-223-1332. Are you in need of a new mailbox to go with your new home? How about a new mailbox to replace your old one? Look no further than Big Dick's Brick Mailboxes in Collinsville. From economy to custom, Big Dick's Brick Mailboxes can create a mailbox that suits your needs. Big Dick's Brick Mailboxes is licensed and insured. They use only high-quality materials and offer a satisfaction guarantee policy. Big Dick's Brick Mailboxes can also make your very own axe throwing set, hanging or standing. Whether you need that axe throwing set or a new mailbox, you need Big Dick's Brick Mailboxes in Collinsville. For more information, get a hold of Big Dick's Brick Mailboxes at 618-680-0208 or online at needanewmailbox.com. Looking for a great place to watch the game with your crew? Look no further than the Lucky Fox Sports Bar in Uptown Collinsville. The Lucky Fox shows Collinsville Cayhawk sports on the big screen. Plus, UFC fights, boxing, Cardinals and Blues, and all of the NFL games with the NFL ticket and enough TVs, you'll be sure to find the game you want. And the food? How about Taco Tuesdays, Wing Wednesdays, plus burgers and sandwiches, pizza, steak, and more, including great drink specials and the coldest beer in town. Plus, they have an in-house DJ on Friday and Saturday nights. Dine in and catch a game or order carry out with the Lucky Fox. The Lucky Fox Sports Bar, 118 East Main Street in Uptown Collinsville. Open daily at 11 a.m. Check out the Lucky Fox Facebook page for daily specials. The Lucky Fox, 618-223-1948. Schaefer Excavating and Demolition in Pontoon Beach provides complete commercial, industrial, and residential demolition and excavating services. Schaefer Excavating and Demolition is family owned and operated by former Cayhawk since 1980 and have over four decades serving the Metro East. Schaefer Excavating and Demolition is your choice for quality and experienced work at a reasonable price. Schaefer's does jobs of any size, whether digging for water and sewer lines, site preparation, or building demolition. Schaefer's can do it all. Schaefer's Excavating and Demolition also sells backfill, topsoil, loam, and other materials. Licensed, bonded, and insured. From earth moving and land clearing to building and demolition and road construction to septic and sewer system work. Call the experienced crew at Schaefer Excavating and Demolition. 618-931-6237. Harold Square and Cold Harold. Two great additions to the Collinsville landscape. Next to the old Harold Brewery and Distillery, Harold Square is a new outdoor multi-use event space in Collinsville. Concerts, fun and games, farmer markets, and so much more. Harold Square. A great space for Collinsville's future. And... Just off the square's turf, Cold Herald, old-fashioned scooped ice cream, gelato, house-made recipes, and premium sourced product. If you're over 21, ask about the good stuff at Cold Herald. Watch Collinsville grow. Herald Square and Cold Herald. Two great new additions, only in Collinsville, Illinois. 
Got vinyl? Rich's Record Emporium in Uptown Collinsville can take care of all of your vinyl needs and more. You can peruse through thousands of records, from country to hard-to-find jazz, and classic rock is always in stock at Rich's Record Emporium, used vinyl, new vinyl, and hard-to-find vinyl. Don't forget to check out the audio room at Rich's, where you can check out the latest in audio gear, from new top-of-the-line speakers to turntables and receivers, plus all of the accessories. Rich's has t-shirts, record cleaners, turntable needles, wall art, and so much more. If you can't find what you're looking for at Rich's, they will do their best to find it for you. Don't forget to mention seeing this ad on the Kayok Sports Network for a 10% discount at checkout. Rich's Record Emporium, 131 West Main Street in Collinsville, or call 618-795-1333 or online at richesrecordemporium.com. My name is Rayshon Taylor, collegiate basketball player at SIUE. At the end of January, I had an ACL injury. I've been searching for ways to come back as best as I can uh, after the construction. Dr. Chris introduced me to the soft wave machine. I'm gonna be honest, at first I was kind of scared because I didn't want it to shock me and hurt me too bad. And I had heard something about it and I did my research on it and it turns out it didn't actually hurt. It just uh, was a good pain. It just finding where it hurts to promote the healing and that's exactly what it did. I've actually had the surgery before. This time I feel like I'm back on my feet quicker much faster, I'm much stronger than I was up to this point last time. And honestly, I feel like I could play right now. I'm excited to get back on the court. Thankful that Dr. Chris introduced me to this. All right, once again, we welcome you back into the Chiropractic Works post game show here on the Kayhawk Sports Network. As your Collinsville Lady Kayhawks drop their season and their Home opener here tonight by a final score of 3-1. to one. No score through the first half of play. And then about, oh, 15 minutes into the second half of play, things changed a little bit as senior defender Liv Colson scored the first goal of the game at the 24-55. Well, 24-55 left in the uh, second half. And then four minutes later, she scored another one. And then less than uh, half a minute later, she scored another goal and got the natural hat trick, three goals in a five-minute span there in midway point or close to the midway point of that second half. And that's how we ended by a final score of three to nothing. And the JV Lady Kayhawks, they had a 0-0 tie. And their head coach, Sydney Carroll, is kind enough to come up to the box and join us now. How are you, dear? I'm good. How are you? Good. You out of breath? A little bit. Yeah. yeah they, you know what? Uh, <laughs> I was taught in broadcasting school is never run up to a microphone. Well, I completely forgot I was going to come up here, so. <laughs> All right, let's begin with your uh, JV Lady Chaos Day 0-0 affair. And you guys had some opportunities there, man. You put on some pressure on their goalkeeper late in that second half. For sure. Um, our girls are super inexperienced. Um, I'll admit that. We don't have very many, like, club players. I'm really out of breath right now, Todd. Yeah, that's um, okay. Breathe. They, uh, they are a... They're a great bunch. They're very coachable, um, which is awesome. I feel like any coach loves a group. They don't have to be the best, but they're coachable. I um, mean, they listen to what you say. Um, so they did a really good job today. Um, I was really proud of them, especially since they've not played together before. Yeah, that's kind of tough when you're talking about players that, that, that have no club experience in. they got to kind of find that gel situation. I think that the varsity team is going to kind of go through that same thing, although a lot of these girls played together last year. Some of you are on the JV team, sure. and some of them got some of those minutes on the varsity side, but they've got to get used to each other. And tonight on the varsity side of things, you played a pretty good defensive first half and parts of that second half, but, man, it just seemed like it was really hard to get things going on the offensive side of the field. For sure. Um, we have a super young group this year. Um, we graduated, like, seven or eight seniors or something like that last year. Um, so we have maybe three or four who have played together JV, varsity three or four that have only gotten varsity experience a little bit um so with you have seven or eight girls who have never played at this level before um they've never played together before so it's just working out those kinks on how everybody plays together um how this person plays how this person plays and using that to your benefit so yeah and then you have uh, of course um Carly Van Dyke in goal, Killed who got tonight. a thousand minutes in last year as a freshman sure. of varsity experience, and she did very well tonight. There was there was nothing that was her fault on those on those three goals. Not, not a thing. Um, the biggest thing we've talked about with Carly 
um, is as a goalkeeper, you see what everybody else doesn't see. Um, you can see the rest of the field where not everybody can. So being vocal, being a leader in the back, and I thought she did a very good job of that tonight. Um, she came out big when we needed her, and all three of those goals were side netting. There's nothing Carly was doing about any of those. Yeah. Are you a big fan of uh, having back-to-back -back games to open a season? Not at all. Yeah, I was um, going to say, these girls are tired. You can tell that they were tired yeah. late in the game. So uh, what are we going to look at tomorrow at Granite City with all these tired legs? Um, I mean, looking at Granite, um, having played against Granite when I was in high school, having coached against Granite for multiple years, they come out and they're physical. Um, that's what they're good at. That's what they're known for. Um, doesn't matter how talented their team is. They're going to come out and they're going to hit you. Um, it's just how Granite plays. It's how they're coached. Um, so we have to figure out a way to um, get our legs underneath of us, obviously, recover quickly because we play in less than 24 hours. But finding a way to be a little bit more physical um, on the ball, protecting the ball a little bit more, and not being afraid to get hit or to hit other people. Um, I think once we figure out that will be good. Do they have that new field ready yet? I have no idea. I know they were working on it. I'm not sure if they're going to be playing on that or the football field. I hope we play well, on that. Well, hey, man, at least, at least they get rid of that grass. Oh, dear Lord, that grass is terrible. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for the visit, dear. We'll see Thank you later. Thank you. All right, that is Sydney Carroll, the assistant to the head coach on the varsity side and the head coach on the JV side. That's going to do it for us. A big thank you once again to Sydney Carroll. A big thank you to Jody Munoz, Munoz excuse me, joining us on the pregame show. And a uh, big thank you to Brett Borm joining us on the other microphone. My name is Todd Duke. We're back at you tomorrow. Lady Calix softball home opener after a big 22-2 win at Father McGivney to get the season started this afternoon. So we'll see if that momentum can carry on against Roxana tomorrow. We'll be on about 4:10 and first pitch scheduled for 4:30. My name is Todd Duke, and until tomorrow afternoon, everyone have a fantastic rest of your Monday.